Hello friends. Welcome to our channel The Fanfic Club. So we are back with a movie part 2 on what if Naruto can steal any Keke Genke. And before we start, be sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Now let's begin. Oto Uto this is the last time I will be training you. You are going to the academy tomorrow and I will be going on a SS rank mission. After that I will be on missions for a while. Itachi Sensei thank you, for everything. By the way congratulations on your promotion to Anbu Captain. I hope we could still hang out and you could teach me a few things once in a while. Of course Otuto, I hear my brother will be in your class. Try to be nice to him, he might sound kind of stuck up but that is because of how our father tried to raise us. I will Itachi Sensei than you for everything again. While they were saying their goodbyes Anbu wearing a dog mask with gravity defying silver hair shunshined in. Yo. Good luck being the Anbu captain. Starting tomorrow I will only become a regular Jonin and maybe take on a Genin team if they pass my test," said Inu-san while removing his mask. In Kakashi-san since Weasel Sensei can't teach me anymore can you teach me some techniques? Weasel Sensei taught me a lot of fire jutsu but you may be able to teach me some earth or wind jutsu. Okay kid. Where do you and Weasel normally train? We normally train in the old Anbu training field in training area 13 at 2 pm but since academy ends at 3 o'clock I'll meet you there at 3.30. Okay I'll meet you there 3.30 tomorrow. Okay? Naruto before you leave me, Kakashi Senpei, Neko san and Tenzo san would like to take you clothes shopping. Neko insisted she come because she would make you look like the coolest academy student ever. As he finished that sentence Neko and Tenzo shunshined in. Hope we're not late said Neko. The four adults took Naruto to the Anbu clothing shop because Naruto explained that the other civilian clothing stores wouldn't let him buy from their stores or charge him hella. In the shop Neko went crazy and ran around the shop grabbing everything and shoving Naruto in the dressing room to have him try different combinations. Naruto tried on many different clothes until he found two sets that he really liked. The first set of clothes had a black armor vest with a black long-sleeved shirt underneath with armored bracers on his left hand, plate skirt with three plates one on each side of the leg and one protecting the private parts, with baggy pants that are bandaged near the bottom under the plate skirt, and armored boots that almost go up to the knee. The second set of clothes is a lot lighter than the first set but offers way less protection and swag. The second set of clothes consists of a plain black long-sleeved shirt with a V-neck covering a metal mesh shirt, baggy pants bandaged on the thigh and below the knees, and a black pair of ninja sandals. They also purchased a very large black scarf if Naruto ever decides to switch it up between bandages and the scarf. Kakashi also offered Naruto one of his traditional masks but in black and he accepted. Naruto was so excited to go to the academy the next day and show his friends his new clothes. The next day, first day at the academy. The next morning Naruto quickly put on his first set of clothes and put on Kakashi's mask and the scarf he bought since he didn't have the time to put on bandages. He quickly prepared his breakfast, ate it, and took off for the academy. While running to school he ran into his friends Kiba and Shino. Kiba and Naruto got really close over the three months, it wasn't surprising considering how similar their personalities are. Shino was kind of hard to get close to since he is Shino. Hey Naruto nice clothes man. You already look like a real ninja, said Kiba. I agree Naruto-san your clothes are very similar to what ninjas wear, said Shino. You know I hate those honorifics. Oh well you always forget so I guess I'll learn to deal with it. Halfway to the academy and Naruto, Kiba, and Shino end up running into Choji and Shikamaru. Naruto. Nice clothes I would buy some new ones but it's too troublesome to go shopping. I would go shopping for clothes but I spend it all on chips. Where do you get all your chips from? It seems like it never runs out, asked Naruto. Wow you just read my mind, I was gonna ask the same question, said Kiba. Choji opened his backpack revealing the secret to his never-ending chips. Apparently he doesn't bring anything in his backpack except bags of chips and his lunch. Upon seeing this the group erupted with laughter. After a short while the group of friends finally arrived at the academy. For some weird reason there were people swarming an announcement post. As they got closer to the post they realized that the post told each student which room and teacher they had. Naruto Uzumaki Room 101 Instructor, Aruka Amino, Naruto read. Who did you guys get? Asked Naruto. Some dude named Aruka, said everyone. Sweet we are in the same class, said Kiba. 
Naruto and his friends got to the classroom 20 minutes early and were one of the few people in class at the time. Naruto decided to sit next to Kiba who was sitting with Shino in the back of the room. Right in front of them was Shikamaru and Choji. Five minutes later everyone in the classroom 101 felt the ground shake. A few of the kids even got under the desk since they thought there was an earthquake. When the door opened it explained everything. An annoyed looking Sasuke Uchiha walked in the door while a million girls were in the halls and were fighting to get in the class to sit next to their Sasuke kun. Oi Sasuke. I see on the first day you are already hogging all the bitches, said Naruto. Fuck you Naruto. Sasuke said sarcastically. Naruto and Sasuke have become slight friends over the last three months. Sasuke's dad tried really hard to get the boys closer. Sasuke had once been forced by his father to Naruto's invitation to go play with the other kids. When he showed up there Ino and Sakura saw him and turned into his fangirls instantly. After that he avoided going to play with the other kids and preferred to just hang out with Naruto. To Naruto Sasuke was kind of a friend but he was slightly distant but to Sasuke Naruto was his best friend since he was his only friend. Sasuke had been a loner before he met Naruto but since he didn't know what friends did he was slightly distant. What would your dad say if he heard you talking like that? Sasuke paled before he answered back. He would say I've been hanging out with you too much, Sasuke said with a smirk. Sasuke was only able to say so much before he got swarmed by the fangirls who managed to get into the classroom. There was not a single seat near Sasuke that wasn't occupied by the fangirls. Didn't Itachi tell me to watch out for those kind of girls? Naruto thought. Hey bitches why don't you give him space to breath before he dies? Hey. We are not bitches. They all said. Sasuke was able to get a little space between him and the girls while they turned to yell at Naruto. To say his thanks he mouthed the thank you that Naruto saw. After a few more minutes all the students in the classroom arrived. Ino Sakura and Hanada came later than the other students so their preferred seat choices were already taken. The three ended up sitting in front of Shikamaru and Choji. They noticed Naruto's new clothing so they left their stuff at their seats and went to talk. Hey Naruto. Nice clothes, I didn't know you had any sense of fashion. You actually look good, and tasty. Ino said flirtatiously and licked her lips. Ya yeah, Naruto you look pretty cool. But Sasuke is cooler because he doesn't need clothes to look good. Nn na Naruto I think you l look very hh handsome with those new clothes. Hanada said while turning red as a tomato. Thanks. You look quite tasty too Ino. And you look pretty like always Hanada. Well I did get help shopping. Nako chan was obsessed with making me look good. Hanada blushed even more when Naruto said she was pretty. She got slightly irked when Naruto said Ino was tasty and when she heard the name Nako chan Luckily Ino asked the question she wanted to ask. Who is this Nako chan Does Naruto-kun have a girlfriend? Asked Ino playfully. Why ya Naruto-kun w who is Nne Nako chan Asked Hanada with a hint of anger. No way Nako chan is a girl I know in Anbu, she is like 20. Naruto said. Whoa Naruto I didn't know you liked older women, Kiba said. Upon hearing this everyone who was friends with Naruto except Hanada laughed. Hanada did not like hearing that Naruto possibly liked older women. Seconds later everyone in the class heard the sound of a book slamming on a desk and turned around to look at what happened. The person who slammed the book was a man in his twenties with brown hair tied in a ponytail who was wearing the Konoha flak jacket and had a scar on the middle of his nose. Hello students I am you homeroom teacher, Aruka Amino. Oh the Naruto kid is in my class. Well I don't really hate him, but I don't particularly like him either. I'll find out how I feel about him after I get to know him. Aruka then went on to talk about himself and what he likes and dislikes but most of the students weren't even listening. After he took the students outside and asked if any of the students could perform the Bunshin no Jutsu. A lot of the kids who wanted to show off pulled attention to themselves and did it. Naruto didn't want to do it then because he couldn't do the Bunshin no Jutsu because of his large chakra. He could do shadow clones no problem but normal clones were a struggle for him. Hey Naruto didn't you do the Bunshin no Jutsu like three months ago to pull a prank on us? Asked Ino. Naruto you know how to do the Bunshin no Jutsu? Asked Aruka. Thanks a lot Ino. Well I kinda can and can't at the same time. What does that mean? I can make a clone but not the way you guys do it. Hum. If it's a clone then it would be good enough. Do it. 
Naruto looked like he was just standing there doing nothing then suddenly smoke erupted and there was a shadow clone standing there. Good job Naruto a bunshin without hand seals. Aruka then walked up to the clone and punched it to dispel it but wondered why the clone felt solid when he punched it. Did it just feel solid? There is no way. I must have been hallucinating. After asking if any more people could perform the bunshin no jutsu and nobody volunteered they had lunch then he took the students to the obstacle course. Each student ran the obstacle course individually in another room so the cheers of other students wouldn't distract them. After everyone did the course Aruka said the top three times. Uzumaki Naruto 10 minutes 15 seconds. Kiba Inazuka 11 minutes 03 seconds. Sasuke Uchiha 11 minutes 35 seconds. That is all for today CYA tomorrow. Aruka dismissed them since it was almost 3 o'clock. Naruto want to go hang out or something? Kiba asked. Sorry I have to go to a training session like every day after school. Damn I should get training too. Alright CYA tomorrow bro. Later dude. Kiba ran off to hang out with Shino, Choji, and Shikamaru before he would go home and ask his mom to help him train. Naruto turned around and was going to head towards the ex Anbu training grounds. That was until he saw Amy standing behind him. Naruto. Hey Amy, he said while walking past her. Naruto. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everything. It was my fault that I became like that and I blamed you. I already apologized to Ino and I've been trying to become her friend. Amy started crying while talking. It's okay Amy don't cry. Naruto will you please forgive me? I don't know what happened to me to make me like that. Please Naruto. Naruto put his left hand on her cheek and put his hand under her chin and brought her eyes to his and looked straight into her eyes. After looking into his eyes Amis knees buckled and she was kneeling on the ground for a second. Naruto helped her get up and looked her in the eyes again. I forgive you Amy. I looked into your eyes to see if you were telling the truth. Thank you so much Naruto. You have no idea how much I've missed you. When you disappeared from the orphanage I thought you were ignoring me for the first two days. When Kenji told me you were nowhere to be found anywhere I started to cry. I thought something bad happened to you or you got adopted and forgot about me. Kenji is my friend too but he is nothing compared to you. You were my best friend and protector Naruto. You were the most important thing there in the orphanage for me. Nothing else mattered, as long as I was with you. After I saw you that day you saved Ino I stopped hanging out with those girls. For the whole three months I waited where you yelled at me every day hoping you would pass by and I could talk to you. She wiped away her tears. While she wasn't talking Naruto pulled her in and hugged her tight. Then when it was the first day of the academy I was so nervous about how you would react when you saw me. I'm glad it ended up like this. I don't care if I had to wait three months. Thank you Naruto for taking me in again. Since we haven't seen each other as friends in years why don't I take you out to eat dinner later? Is that a date? Now that is the Amy I know. Where do you want to meet? How about in front of the academy? Okay see you there at 7. Well I gotta go or I'll be late for my training. CYA Naruto. Naruto sped off in the direction of training area 13. What have you done to me Naruto? A simple look in my eyes or a simple smile and lose control. I don't mind as long as you will be with me. I can't imagine what it would be like without you. Secret area in training area 13 aka X Anbu training grounds. I actually planned on coming 30 minutes to an hour late but a little birdie told me you had a date after this. What? Who told you? I said a little birdie did. I thought of all people you would go with the Yamanaka princess or maybe the Hyuga princess. Yes I know how little Miss Hyuga looks at you. Whatever. What are you going to train me in? Catch. Kakashi threw a scroll at Naruto. Naruto caught it and opened it and inside were a lot of earth jutsu. I'm giving you this so you can train by yourself since the Hokage will try to slap a genin team on me. So if you notice I'm not here that day you should train by yourself. Thank you Kakashi Sensei. Itachi Sensei gave me a scroll with a bunch of fire jutsu too. I can help you with both fire and earth jutsu since I have copied many of both jutsu but I can't help you with your wind. I recommend learning how to do earth jutsu first so if I'm not here you can still train earth jutsu. Okay. So how do I do earth jutsu? Fire was pretty easy for me. Okay for fire jutsu you remember how you put chakra into your lungs and blew it out? Yes. Well for earth jutsu there are two ways. The first way is to channel chakra into your hands while you do the hand signs and slam your hands on the ground. 
The second way is to channel your chakra into one of your feet while you do the hand signs and slam the foot on the ground after. The hands is more effective for beginners but using your legs is faster and safer. Some earth jutsu are weird and don't need hand seals. Look at Doden. Shinju Zanshu no jutsu, it requires no hand seals only that you coat your body in chakra and try to turn the outer edge into earth chakra. If you do it right it should look like this. Kakashi looked like he melted into the ground. After a few seconds he grabbed Naruto's legs and pulled him down so only his head is sticking out. Pretty cool eh? Yeah but can you let me up now? Try to get out using the jutsu. Naruto was having a hard time. Earth jutsu were fairly difficult for him to learn since he wasn't sure how to turn his chakra into earth chakra. Then it hit him, when he was doing fire jutsu he would think about fire before expelling his jutsu. He assumed that if he thought about earth while his body was coated with chakra then the same thing should happen. It worked and Naruto grabbed Kakashi's ankle and pulled him under. Wow Naruto you got it already? It's only been one hour. I heard this technique usually takes two to three hours even for those with earth affinities. Good job. As he said good job the Kakashi underground exploded into smoke. Well keep practicing that jutsu, but instead of just going up to someone and pulling their ankle try to use this jutsu to move around the earth and appear at another location. Okay. Naruto tried to move around under the earth. He could move horizontally without too much difficulty but he didn't know how to move upwards. Kakashi sensei I understand how to move horizontally but how do I move vertically? Hmm I'm sure you can figure it out yourself, it's better if you do anyways. Naruto spent two hours underground not knowing how to move upwards unless he could grab something. He tried everything from making the chakra cloaking his body normal chakra. After another 30 minutes he learned how to get out without grabbing something but it wasn't what Kakashi wanted. To do this he stuck his hand out of the ground and changed the chakra type on his hand and used his hand to pull the rest of his body out. Oh snap you are going to be late for your date. What? You'll be late if you go home to take a shower, but I'm all dirty. No problem I know a few water jutsu, Sweden, Mazurapa. A wave of water hit Naruto and cleaned him up but he was drenched. I'm drenched now. Now what? Um since you can't use wind jutsu why don't you coat your body with fire chakra to evaporate the water? Good idea sensei. Naruto channeled fire chakra into his body and looked like he was going to turn into a super saiyan. It worked and dried his clothes. Gotta go sensei cya, Naruto said as he ran towards the academy. Front of academy, I wonder where he is. I hope he doesn't stand me up. What time is it? Oh it's not even 7 yet. God why am I so nervous? This isn't even a real date. Amy Chan. Naruto yelled as he was running. Naruto kun where are we going? Well I invited you to dinner so where do you want to go? Um. I don't really eat out ever. Oh um. Do you like ramen? Um. I've never tasted it. Okay let's go to Ichiraku's, follow me. As they walked to Ichiraku's they mainly talked about her life in the orphanage after she left. Apparently the treatment she received before she met Naruto was nothing compared to her treatment after he disappeared. Before she met Naruto they hated her because she was new and easy to pick on. After he left they picked on her because they were jealous of her relationship with Naruto and because Naruto wasn't there anymore to stop them. Naruto's fist clenched when he heard about what the girls did to her. After a short while they finally ended up at Ichiraku's ramen. Hey old man, Ayame. Hey cutie. What's your name because I definitely would like to see more of you. Ayame said while licking her lips. Ayame. It's me. Naruto. Naruto said while taking his scarf off. Oh Kami. I'm so sorry Naruto. If you never come back I'll understand. Said the extremely embarrassed Ayame. Amy was snickering the whole time this was happening. What if I come back because of this? Said Naruto in a playful voice. What would you like to order? Ayame decided it would be best if she ignored his last sentence. Um I would like to have five miso ramens, I would like one miso ramen. I'm so sorry about that again Naruto. Oh my what happened to me? It must have been his clothes. How can I even think of Naruto that way, he's like a little brother to me. Well that was embarrassing, Tuchi said to Ayame. Shut up dad. Ayame yelled. Naruto who was outside heard their conversation and laughed. Surprisingly Naruto was able to wolf down his five bowls of ramen before Amy was able to finish her bowl. Hey Amy how do you like the ramen? Um. It's the best thing I've tasted so far. 
After Amy finished her food Naruto offered to escort her to wherever she is going. Amy where do you live now? I still uh. Live in the orphanage. Do they check if you come back or not? No honestly one time I stayed at an old friend's house and they never even knew. I remember when I lived in the orphanage you basically live with like 20 people in one room and you have a shitty bed. Is it still the same as it was when I left? Yeah it's the same. I think they kick you out of the orphanage if you were over 12 years old. I haven't seen a person there that is over 12 years old and was allowed to stay there. Well if everything goes well we will be Jenin at 12 and I know for a fact that Jenin are allowed to have an apartment especially the orphans. Also your rent is deducted from your pay so you and if you haven't had missions they will let you stay in your apartment till you make money. That's pretty nice who came up with that idea. The Yandaimi. He's a pretty cool guy the first guess. You kinda look like him. You are the second person to say that. Naruto escorted Amy back to the orphanage and went back to his house and went to sleep. Three months later, Sunday, Naruto woke up at 10 a.m., he loved sleeping in during the weekends. It has been three months since the beginning of the academy. He was so excited for the first few weeks thinking he would actually learn stuff. The only fun Naruto would ever have in that class was when he was pranking someone or when they do taijutsu sparring. The history lessons were really boring since he had already read all those stuff while doing research on the Yandaimi and the Kayubi. Iruka sensei was an okay guy who had a weird face every time he looked at Naruto, it actually made him laugh in several occasions but he wondered why he made that face. Naruto was not striving to become the rookie of the year or anything, he just wanted to get though the stupid shit academy. Little did Naruto know that if he showed off his abilities he would have been able to graduate early but since he had many secrets to hide he didn't show off. Naruto got in the shower and took a long soak in his bathtub. Naruto dried off and went downstairs to the kitchen to eat breakfast. He cooked a standard breakfast, sunny side up eggs, bacon, and toast. Halfway through eating someone was knocking on the door. He looked through the peephole and saw Itachi was standing there without his mask. Naruto opened the door and greeted his sensei. Ohayu Itachi sensei, would you like to come in? Itachi nodded. Sorry I wasn't expecting company so I didn't get to clean up. So, what's up? Naruto I came here to give you these, and I will be going on a SS rank mission tomorrow, I just wanted to ask you some stuff. Itachi handed over three sealing scrolls. Naruto unsealed one of the sealing scrolls whatever was sealed inside and approximately 50 scrolls fell out. The scroll you unsealed contained every single fire jutsu in the Uchiha have copied that was recorded. The other sealing scrolls contain jutsu for wind and earth but I recommend finding a person who uses wind jutsu to help you with it. I don't know what to say. Are you sure the Uchiha are okay with you giving me this? And you can ask me anything. I copied the scrolls and left the copies in the Uchiha library. Naruto do you trust me? Yes with my life. You are like an older brother to me. Can I ask that whatever happens tomorrow that you'll never forget me and believe that whatever I will do has a reason? Also can I ask you to watch over Sasuke and make sure he doesn't do anything stupid? I will never forget you sensei. Also everything you have ever done was with reason. I'll watch over Sasuke but will you promise to come back? Ah. Naruto I don't know if I can do that. SS rank missions are insanely dangerous and are considered suicide missions. Why did you accept such a dangerous mission? For the good of the leaf. Naruto has the Sandame told you about the will of fire, yet? No what is this will of fire, it is the belief that every Konoha shinobi will fight to protect the village and its inhabitants no matter what. It is the uncontrollable urge to fight to protect your home. Wow. Is it real? Well not all Konoha shinobi have the will of fire, but those that do are usually end up as legends. Such as the Shodam, Naidame, Sandame, Yandaimi and all the countless heroes on the memorial stone and Sakumo Hataki. Who is Sakumo Hataki? According to the villagers and the memorial stone he is not a hero, but to every shinobi that has seen him in action and has met him in real life he is a legend. The reason the villagers don't see him as a hero was because he was on SS rank mission and was unable to complete it in order to save the lives of his fellow ninja. I personally have never met him but I greatly respect him for his actions. Sadly he took his own life after being disgraced. Wait isn't Kakashi sensei's last name Hitaki? Yes it is. He is the White Fang's son, and he committed suicide in front of Kakashi himself. Naruto felt sad that his sensei had to lose his father in that fashion. No child should ever see their parents commit suicide in front of them. 
Well Naruto I have to go prepare myself since this is a very dangerous mission. Remember Otouta what you promised. Itachi left Naruto's home feeling sad that the mission he was about to do the next day would force him to leave the village. He loved his family and his clan but the safety of the village greatly outweighed that. He was sad he wouldn't be able to see both of his little brothers grow. It was kind of weird but he felt closer to Naruto than his own little brother. He saw some of himself in that boy and the mission he received from the Hokage helped him form such a tight bond with a kid. Itachi went to go to his house and sit in his room to meditate. He needed to kill off all emotion before he performed his SS rank mission. He needed to become a cold-blooded killer. He needed to be ruthless and merciless. Naruto finished eating his breakfast and went to the park since all his friends were going to be there. When he got there they just hung out and walked around and played a few games. After the day was over they all said their goodbyes and went to their respective homes. They had no idea of the shitstorm that was on its way to Konoha. After school, next day, Sasuke had a big grin on his face as he walked near the river. This has been the best day of his life so far. First the majority of his fangirls caught some sort of illness and was not there at school. Second he got paired with Kiba Inazuka for taijutsu practice and was able to beat him, which made him one of the top taijutsu users in the class. Sasuke also had just mastered his kaiten. Gokaku no jutsu the day before and his dad praised him. And he made one of the best decisions in his life when he agreed to hang out with Kiba, Naruto, Shino, Choji, and Shikamaru. He was hesitant to hang out with them because last time he did he was stuck with two more fangirls in the form of Ino and Sakura. But hanging out with them was a blast, he loved hanging out with Naruto but hanging out with all of the guys made him feel like he finally had friends. He genuinely had fun with the guys and was hoping they could hang out with them again. He passed the gate of the Uchiha clan and was wondering why it was so quiet and it smelled like shit. He opened the gate and saw something that would traumatize him forever. Dead bodies everywhere, littering the streets the smell of blood was thick in the air. He could see people that he always smiled at and waved to lying on the ground lifeless with one or two cuts that ended their existence. What happened here? This was the Uchiha clan one of the most powerful clans in Konoha and in the elemental nations. Everything was dead even pets. Sasuke ran to his parents home hoping his dad was able to stop the people who did this. What he saw was a sight that a child should never see. His father and mother was on their knees pleading something to the man holding a ninja to. Please kill us but let Sasuke live. Both of the parents pleaded. That's what I plan to do. Don't worry he will be taken care of, said Itachi. Thank you. You can kill us now. Fugaku said. Itachi ended their lives in two swift cuts one for each of their throats. He teared up, he did not want to kill his mother she was one of the nicest people ever but if he left her alive Konoha might try to make her a breeding machine. Itachi loved his mother dearly but all he could offer her was a swift painless death with assurance that her other son would be safe and nothing would ever happen to him. Itachi loved his father too but not as much as his mother. His father had been very strict with him as a kid since he was the genius prodigy of the Uchiha clan. His father took away his childhood and trained him at a very young age. He didn't hate his father for this but he wished he could have been a kid for longer. He too gave his father a swift and painless death. He was walking to the door and sensed something. No why is he here? Fuck now I have to do something that will probably mess him up in the head. Sasuke I know you are there. Why Nisan? Why did you kill everyone? I can't tell him the real reason or he might go crazy and get himself killed. I'll take the blame for this since I caused the pain he is feeling. To test my strength. I wanted to test the power of my new Sharingan. Itachi activated his Mangekyu Sharingan and his eyes swirled into a three-sided shuriken. Sukuyomi. Itachi jumped away from the Uchiha compound bawling his eyes out. It was all over. The Uchiha clan was reduced to three people. Itachi knew that the Uchiha clan was too proud and knew it would eventually lead to its downfall. He never knew that he himself would exterminate every single Uchiha clan member except for his brother and the so-called Uchiha Madara. I'm sorry Ka San, Tu San, Oto Uto, and the rest of the Uchiha clan. It had to be done for the village. If you guys only listened to me and stopped planning for the coup. Itachi would disappear from the planet for the next five years. Next morning Naruto woke up to an alarm. Another day of that piece of shit academy. At least my friends are there. Naruto jumped into the shower and quickly showered. 
After getting out he bandaged up his face since he had extra time and put the rest of his clothes on including his scarf. Naruto went over to the direction of Kiba's house in case he would run into him then they could walk together. Naruto ran into Kiba while Kiba exited the Inazuka compound. Naruto liked messing with Kiba sometimes so whenever he was with Kiba and his sister was there he would compliment her for her good looks and slightly hit on her. Naruto saw Hana seeing her brother out when he grinned inside. Hey Hana you look really pretty today. Is that a new haircut I see? Fuck off Naruto. Said Kiba. Thanks Naruto you are the only male who noticed my new haircut. Is it so wrong to compliment a beautiful lady Kiba? Hana blushed. Hana actually liked being complimented by Naruto since most males were too scared of her mother to say anything. Naruto shut it. Kiba said. Goodbye my fair maiden. Hope to see you again sometime so I can admire the beauty that only you posses. Naruto said with a wink. That wink was all it took for Kiba to try to punch Naruto. Naruto ran away towards the academy with Kiba chasing him. The still smiling Hana walked back into the compound. Her mother saw her smiling and decided to tease her. My my does the mighty Hana Inazuka have a thing for Naruto? Shut up mom. He's like six years younger than me. You know I wouldn't mind a man six years younger than me. Sume purred. Mom. That's gross. Hana we Inazuka live by our instincts, just wait till you get older. I can't talk about this right now. CYA mom I'm going to meet my team. With Naruto and Kiba Kiba finally calmed down and they started talking. Oh shit we left Shino. Said Kiba. Oh fuck, he's probably standing there waiting for us. We have to go back. Said Naruto. You know this wouldn't happen if you didn't hit on my sister. Dude I'm 8 years old your sister is 14. She wouldn't want anything to do with me. That's true but I see her blushing and smiling when you compliment her. She might be starting to want you. Well I certainly wouldn't mind. She's cute, got a pretty good body. Naruto got cut off by Kiba's fist. Naruto narrowly dodged and took off for the Abarame compound. Get back here Uzumaki. Abarame compound, son. Why are you still here you will be late for school. It seems they have forgotten about me. Don't worry about it son, I get forgotten a lot too. Especially when I hang out with the Ino Shika Cho group. It is the curse of the Abarame clan. Father. Why is it that we get forgotten so much? It must be because we are not very talkative and we don't attract too much attention. I see your logic is sound father. While the father and son were complaining about people forgetting about them they saw Naruto running in their direction with a furious Kiba running after him. Take that back about my sister. Kiba yelled. Are you telling me your sister is not cute and has an ugly body? No, but you shouldn't talk about someone's sister like that. Kiba said after calming down. Hey, Shino. Naruto yelled while waving. Goodbye father. Shino said before walking up to Naruto and Kiba. Did Naruto compliment your sister again? Yeah, it's so annoying man. Why, your sister is a beautiful girl and she seems to like being complimented. Dude because it sounds like you want to bone my sister. Well now that you bring it up, Kiba tried to hit him again. Your sister is hot. 10 out of 10 would bang. Naruto said while running. Shino sighed, this has been happening every day for the past two months. You would think Kiba would understand that Naruto is just fucking with him so he does it every day but Kiba falls for it every day. He quickly ran to catch up to the other two. Shikamaru and Choji were walking to school when he saw Naruto speed by with Kiba following him yelling curses at him. Then they realized Shino was walking next to them. So let me guess. Naruto complimented Kiba's sister again and said she was hot then Kiba said it was weird because it sounds like Naruto would like to have sex with her then Naruto said he would totally have sex with his sister. Asked Shikamaru. Yes. Said Shino. So troublesome, I'm surprised Kiba hasn't got that if he wouldn't react to it then Naruto wouldn't do it anymore. Yes. The boys finally reached the academy and walked into their classroom. Amy called Naruto to sit next to her in the back left of the classroom. Kiba and Shino sat together in the middle and Shikamaru and Choji sat in front of Kiba and Shino. Naruto looked around and waved at Ino and Sakura and Hanada. While he was looking around he noticed that Sasuke wasn't there in class. It was weird because Sasuke is there every day and actually likes class. After class today's class was really boring for Naruto since it was a lecture only class. On Mondays Uruka tends to lecture the whole time. Tuesdays they practice accuracy with Shuriken and Kanai. Wednesday they practice taijutsu and spar. 
Thursday is another lecture day. And on Friday they learn academy jutsu or get better at doing ones they are struggling with. Naruto was bored every day except Wednesday. Naruto loved to spar. It was then where he could test out some new moves he created. Naruto was really worried about Sasuke since he wasn't one to miss class. Maybe he had to go somewhere today. Naruto then headed to the training or 13. Naruto's training session was different from usual. Instead of practicing techniques Naruto focused on chakra control. Kakashi first recommended that he practice tree walking but since Itachi had already taught him that Kakashi taught him how to water walk. Naruto didn't start to understand how to do it until the end of their training session. After the training session Naruto went to his house to relax and maybe practice some katas on his siren to burrito. After a pretty easy day he sat in his bed till he fell asleep. Next day Naruto didn't understand what was going on. If Sasuke ditched classes often he would probably think the kid is ditching but since he knew Sasuke liked going to class and try harding he didn't understand where he went. He was hoping Itachi was fine since he did go on a SS rank mission. He just hoped Sasuke would be at school so he can ask what's up. After leaving his house he did the standard troll Kiba by using his sister then go pick up Shino then go to the academy. In class Naruto was glad he saw Sasuke sitting in his seat. They had gotten there earlier so there were no fangirls yet. Naruto went to approach Sasuke who seemed to be in really deep thought. Hey Sasuke? Thinking about your bitches? Sasuke didn't respond and kept looking straight. Oi Sasuke. What's up man? HN, what the fuck man? What happened to you? You were all chill last two days ago then you disappear for two days and you act like one of your fangirls stuck up two dildos in your ass. Fuck Naruto leave me alone. Fuck you. I thought we were friends. Naruto was pissed. He just wanted to know if anything happened that made Sasuke miss a day of school. And Sasuke started acting like a little bitch didn't help. After class Naruto hung out with the guys since Kakashi sent a dog summon to tell Naruto he had a mission. Naruto was talking to the other guys and saying how Sasuke was being a little bitch. Apparently Kiba heard that the whole Uchiha clan got wiped out by one guy. Choji said he heard that it was Sasuke's older brother Itachi. When Naruto heard that name his face went pale. Itachi killed off his whole clan. Even his parents. I didn't think he even had the ability to do that. There must have been a reason. He came to me and told me all those things. It must have been his mission. Hey you could borrow one of the bodies and study it so we can get the Sharingan. Naruto said he wouldn't kill any fellow Konoha shinobi but he never said anything about examining bodies of already deceased shinobi. Did they clean up the bodies yet? Naruto asked. Um I don't know. I have to go to the restroom, my stomach hurts. Naruto ran towards the Uchiha compound to see if he could snag a dead body. When he was close to the Uchiha compound he quickly hanged into Sasuke and went over the caution tape. Naruto was disappointed to see that they already cleaned it up. Naruto made a cage bunshin and sent it back to his friends while he went over to the coroners. Coroners he sneaked in through the back window and looked around for any Uchiha body. Sadly he was unable to find any bodies but he might be able to find out which morgue the bodies went to. As soon as he saw the coroner go outside for a bit he quickly looked through the coroner's files and took the binder that was labeled Yu Naruto went back to hiding with the binder looking for the last name Uchiha and occupation Shinobi. It took him five minutes before he was able to find. Fugaku Uchiha Occupation, Shinobi Police Morgue, Konoha Central Morgue. Naruto looked around to see if the coroner was still there but he was outside still so he returned the binder and went out the back window again. He then headed towards the direction of Konoha's Central Morgue. Konoha Central Morgue by the time he reached the Konoha Central Morgue it was already closed. This was more desirable since there would be nobody inside. Naruto jumped in one of the open windows and began his search. To make it faster he walked over to the front desk to look at the files. After 30 minutes he was able to find the file with the Uchiha. Fugaku Uchiha. B423. Yashira Uchiha B420. Teka Uchiha B394. Naruto quickly walked over to B423 and, borrowed, the three Uchiha bodies. Naruto quickly left and ran back to his house, Naruto's house. Since we already know about his Keke Jenke from previous studies I believe it is safe to assume the thing that makes their eye into the Sharingan is inside the eyeball or the optic nerves. Carefully extract both the eyeball and optic nerves so we can study it. Naruto complied to the voice in his head and did every step that it told him to do. 
After a long eight hours and five eyeballs destroyed he understood what mutation the Uchiha clan had to be able to awaken the Sharingan. His Keke Genke applied the same mutation to his eyeballs and as he tested it by pouring chakra into his eyes they turned into the Sharingan with one tomo and a sinister grin adorned his face. Naruto was insanely hungry and exhausted after the extraction. He quickly put the destroyed eyeballs back into each body and closed the eyelids. He pulled out leftover food from the other day and tried to eat without thinking about what he just did. He was only able to eat so much before the images kept flowing though his mind. Naruto went to bed and had nightmares of Uchiha yelling at him for desecrating their graves. Next week at school over the next week Naruto and Sasuke's relationship got even worse than it was. After finding out that Sasuke's family got slaughtered by Itachi himself Naruto tried to apologize to Sasuke and make up with him but Sasuke pushed him away. Sasuke was distancing himself from everyone and every time people approached him he would react violently so Naruto gave up on him. He promised Itachi he would look out for Sasuke but that didn't mean he had to like him. He decided he would keep an eye out for something that would harm Sasuke but he wouldn't be all buddy buddy with him. Hey students today is sparring day. Aruka said. The kids that were good at taijutsu cheered while those who weren't were preparing themselves for a beating. We are going to change up the sparring partners today since the rankings have changed for taijutsu. Aruka was telling the other people who they were sparring. Aruka walked over to Naruto and told him he would be sparring Sasuke in the third match. The first three matches were boring matches considering both students have not even mastered the academy style. Uzumaki Naruto vs Uchiha Sasuke, upon saying this the cheering began. Those who were Sasuke fangirls were cheering loudly. Go Sasuke-kun kick his ass, Hajime, yelled Iruka. Ready for a beat down Uzumaki? Yeah I'm ready to kick your ass. Sasuke got angered by that last statement and rushed forwards throwing out a right straight. Naruto weaved to his right and laid two quick jabs on Sasuke's face. If I actually wanted to hit you, you would be out. Pathetic. Sasuke got reminded that his brother called him that before he left and it made him really angry. Sasuke charged forward again then jumping and trying to kick Naruto. Naruto side stepped the kick and landed a hard fist in Sasuke's gut. Sasuke was down and got the wind knocked out of him. Aruka was about to call the match but Sasuke stood up. Ready to give up? You haven't landed a hit on me. Shut up cheater yelled one of the fangirls. Give up. Your hits don't hurt that much. Well I'm not hitting you will full strength. Sasuke got angered by his taunts again and rushed forward and tried to fake a left straight into a right hook. Naruto dodged the fake and almost took a right hook in the face but he pulled his head back and did a backflip and ended up kicking Sasuke in the chin with his foot. Sasuke never saw it coming and fell on the ground for the second time. He was furious, Naruto was just toying with him. He stood up and charged at Naruto again but before he could land a punch he felt a sharp pain and realized Naruto's foot was jammed in his gut. Pathetic. Itachi is way better than you. The mention of his brother filled the Uchiha with rage. He was so angry he wasn't sparring anymore he would try to go for the kill. He dashed forward through a right straight which was caught by Naruto then he jumped and spun around to try to land a kick which Naruto ducked. While Sasuke was in mid-air Naruto pulled on Sasuke's caught hand and gave it a pull and kneed Sasuke in the head. Sasuke was dizzy but he wouldn't give up. He needed to be stronger to get his revenge. Sasuke stood up and started gathering chakra into his lungs. Aruka wasn't paying attention to Sasuke's chakra spike until it was too late. Kaden. Gokaku no Jutsu Sasuke spit out a decently sized fireball hurling towards Naruto. After the fireball traveled three quarters of the distance Naruto countered the jutsu. Kaden. Gokaku no jutsu Naruto spit out a very large fireball that engulfed the smaller fireball and continued to travel towards Sasuke. Everyone's eyes widened when they saw Naruto perform the same jutsu as Sasuke but made Sasuke's look like a piece of shit. Ino and Hanada were reminded of the time when Naruto saved Hanada from those bullies. Iruka was standing there dumbfounded until he snapped out of the daydream. He was thinking of jutsu he could use to counter with but he didn't know water jutsu. Suddenly a multiple balls of water were fired at the fireball eventually putting it out but before it did a lot of steam covered the area. While everyone couldn't see very well from the steam they heard hitting noises and a scream of pain. After the steam cleared Sasuke was laying on the ground grabbing his ribs while his cheeks starting to swell. Nice job Mizuki. Thank God you have an affinity for water. 
Aruka said. Now you two come with me. We need to talk to the Hokage. Aruka grabbed both Naruto and Sasuke and shunshined in front of the Hokage's door. Hi can we see the Hokage? Asked Aruka to the secretary. Sure nobody is in there right now. Aruka opened the door and dragged the two boys in. How are you doing Aruka, Naruto, Sasuke? Not good Hokage-sama. Sasuke over here used a fire jutsu during taijutsu sparring. Oh what happened? Did anyone get hurt? Well no Naruto countered with the same technique but the fire just you was much larger. Oh okay. Boys, it is called taijutsu sparring for a reason. Don't use ninjutsu. He started it. Said Naruto. I know he did. Sasuke you need to keep your emotions in check if it was anyone other than Naruto you could have seriously hurt them. But I am impressed that you were able to counter a fire jutsu with the same fire jutsu. Sandame. He almost killed Sasuke with that jutsu don't encourage either of them to use any type of jutsu. Yes don't use jutsu during a taijutsu spar. If your opponent is then you can either dodge or counter. Because of this you two are going to be in detention. Now promise you won't do it again. Sorry Hokage-sama it won't again. Said Sasuke. Sorry Gigi I wanted to see if my fireball was better than his. It won't happen again. Naruto said. Sasuke glared at Naruto and asked him a question. Why do you even know that technique? That is an Uchiha technique how did you, an unclaimed loser learn it? My teacher was an Uchiha and he taught it to me. Who was your teacher? Wouldn't you like to know? Well he isn't in the hidden leaf right now. Upon hearing this Sarutobi facepalmed and hoped that Sasuke did not understand what he said. Luckily Sasuke thought he meant that the person was dead. Luckily Sasuke did not remember that Naruto was friends with his brother. Iruka escorted both of the boys to the classroom and forced them to write, I will not use jutsu in a spar, 500 times. Naruto was sad because he was going to start looking through the scrolls Itachi gave him and learn a few fire jutsu or earth jutsu since Kakashi was still on a mission. After writing the phrase 500 times Naruto left and went directly to the morgue to drop off the thing he borrowed. Stupid Sasuke had to use a jutsu during our taijutsu spar. I'll kick his ass on the next spar. Naruto waited till the morgue closed then dropped off the borrowed goods then headed home. While walking home he passed by a sunglasses shop that was in process of closing. He quickly ran to the store and asked the store owner if he could quickly buy a pair of sunglasses. He ended up buying two different pairs of sunglasses, one looked similar to Ray-Ban Wayfarer sunglasses and another pair that were similar to Shino's which he would use to prank him someday. As soon as he put on his new sunglasses he activated his Sharingan and walked home with it on to see how long he can hold the Sharingan for. He remembered how Itachi would activate his Sharingan just to improve his stamina and Naruto wondered if the same exercise would apply to him. Naruto walked home slowly so he could spend more time with his activated Sharingan. Naruto wanted to get used to the Sharingan a little bit since it was different from using his normal eyes. He could see a bunch of different colors coming from the people's chakra and thought it was pretty cool that he could see in that way. Naruto eventually made his way home and eventually went to sleep. Testing Day. Room 101. Naruto was so excited, his days in the academy were about to be over. Over the four years his relationship with Sasuke deteriorated, he tried to sympathize with the guy a few weeks after they almost both killed each other but the Uchiha did not want to have anything to do with Naruto. Over the four years the Uchiha kept try-harding in class really wanting to become the rookie of the year. Sasuke didn't want Naruto to have that honor, little did he know Naruto did not care for that and was content with breezing through the class in the middle of the pack. Sasuke would always chalinge Naruto when Aruka allowed choice sparring but Sasuke got humiliated every time. Sasuke hated his former best friend with a passion, upon remembering how close his former best friend was with his brother angered him even more. Naruto's relationship with Sasuke ruined his relationship with Sakura. She at first didn't pay much attention to the two's fighting but after seeing how harshly Naruto treated Sasuke during the spars she felt angry that he would always beat him into the ground. To Sakura her friendship with Naruto was worth less than the potential relationship with Sasuke. They were still friends but they were very distant and would only hang out if they were both invited by Ino. Ino was less of a fangirl than Sakura, she saw how Naruto treated Sasuke in spars but didn't mind it too much and still remained close friends with Naruto. After Amy apologized to Ino about bullying her Ino invited Amy to play with them and hang out and eventually became close friends. 
Amis' relationship with Naruto got even better after her heartfelt apology. Every day she would try to sit next to Naruto and ever since she was 11 she would try to get as close to him as possible. It was obvious she wanted Naruto and Naruto knew that. Naruto himself was not sure if he felt anything for her. She was very persistent though and was determined to make her his. Hanada's relationship with Naruto basically stayed the same. She was friends with the boy and had a major crush on him but she was too shy to do anything about it. She would sometimes follow him around until he mysteriously disappears. Naruto always knew Hanada would stalk him, he thought it was kind of weird but he let her stalk him if he wasn't doing anything important. Naruto and the guys got even closer than before, Naruto was even able to get Shino to talk a lot more than he used to. Choji and Naruto would have many ramen eating contests and other foods they both liked. Shikamaru taught Naruto how to play shogi since none of the other boys his age were interested. Naruto found out that like Choji, Shikamaru's backpack was filled with items that have nothing to do with school. The only items in Shikamaru's backpack were a shogi board, shogi pieces, his packed lunch, and a pillow if he wanted to sleep on hard ground. Kiba and Naruto were basically brothers. They enjoyed messing with each other, hanging out together, and recently they picked up a new hobby. Kiba was known to be a slight pervert, after hanging out with him for a while it started to rub off on Naruto and they would often just sit down and talk about how hot a girl was and if they would bang her or not. More often than not Shikamaru would be also sleeping where they are sitting and Choji would be eating chips and saying, if she could cook me a good meal I would totally bang her. Shino would sit there stoically and tell the two perverts that it is not gentlemanly to talk about such matters right in front of a girl. Kiba got his dog Akamaru about two years back and Naruto loved playing with the dog. Naruto and Aruka eventually got along very well. Aruka eventually realized that Naruto was actually a good person and finally accepted him for who he was. Naruto would pull a lot of pranks and Aruka would be the one who caught him. He even treated Naruto to ramen multiple times and got to know him a lot better after eating with him. Without a doubt Naruto was Aruka's favorite student. Naruto's training with Kakashi went really well. After four years he was able to teach Naruto many earth jutsu and help Naruto with some fire jutsu. Naruto found out that Kakashi had a Sharingan after he asked Kakashi if he was doing a chakra control exercise right and Kakashi moved his headband to check how Naruto was doing it. After finding out Kakashi had the Sharingan Naruto got very curious and asked many questions about it. This really helped Naruto since he was able to learn how Kakashi trains his Sharingan and he learned what the Sharingan could do. He also learned how to put his chakra into weapons with help from Kakashi who invited his friend Asuma. Kakashi had a lot of time to train Naruto when he didn't have missions because every time he got a genin team they would be unable to pass his test. But before Naruto's graduation he was told that chances were that he would get a certain student that would not be allowed to fail so he wouldn't be able to train as much. Naruto also asked help from Gai to rate his taijutsu once in a while when Gai came up to Kakashi for a challenge. Gai thought it was unyouthful to deny a young man training so Naruto helped himself and Kakashi by asking for training. Gai helped him create his own style which was a mixture of the Goken style, the Namikaze style, and Muay Thai style. Gai was very interested in the Namikaze style and the Muay Thai style but Naruto told him he created the first style and learned the second one from a scroll. Gai was not familiar with the Namikaze style since Minato himself rarely resorted to Taijutsu. Minato was more of a ninjutsu powerhouse more than anything. Gai also introduced weights to Naruto and it helped increase Naruto's speed and strength slightly since he only a 8 to 12 year old boy and Gai didn't want to stunt his growth by introducing big weights. On Naruto's own time he would learn jutsu from the scrolls Itachi gave him. After 4 years he was able to master 10 jutsu from the fire side and 10 jutsu from the earth side. Although Naruto could have learned how to perform wind jutsu from Asuma he only got help from him once and it was to learn how to channel chakra into a weapon. Naruto also found out that he had very good stamina with his Sharingan and is able to keep it on for the whole day if he had to. The problem with Naruto using the Sharingan was he was forced to wear sunglasses so other people couldn't see his eyes. After training for 4 years he was able to upgrade his Sharingan from a 1 tomo on each eye to 2 tomo to each eye. Naruto found out that upgrading his Sharingan would take a lot of time and training but it would be worth it. Naruto found out that with a 1 tomo Sharingan you were given the ability to see chakra as color and grants enhanced vision. 2 Tomo Sharingan gives the user the ability to copy jutsu and movements of other people and gives even greater vision. 
3 Tomo Sharingan grants greater vision than the 2 Tomo Sharingan, can anticipate the opponent's moves by looking at their muscles twitch but can only anticipate to a certain point, and gives the ability to put the target under a genjutsu. Back to the exam. Hey guys, it's time for the written test, Aruka said. Grumbles were heard around the room. The test was fairly easy but one question didn't make sense to Naruto. What date did the Yandaimi Hokage kill the Kayubi no Yoko? Naruto raised his hand. Aruka approached him. What do you need Naruto? Well this question doesn't make sense. Naruto pointed at the Yandaimi question. Aruka read it then gulped. He knows. Naruto just put your birthday. Nobody else in this class knows about that except you. Aruka whispered in his ear. Naruto nodded and went back into his test. After the written exam they did a bunch of pointless exams such as the stealth exam, mental health exam, health exam, until they got to the taijutsu exam. Okay we will be having our taijutsu exam. When we call you up you will either face Mizuki or I in a taijutsu spar. We will grade you accordingly. Each student went up and performed taijutsu against one of the two instructors. The instructors went fairly easy on the kids to avoid injuries. Next was Naruto's turn. Naruto Uzumaki. You will be going against Mizuki. Ha. The demon brat I'm going to try to injure him so he can't pass the ninjutsu exam, thought Mizuki. For the first time in the whole exam Mizuki charged at the student and threw a right straight. Naruto dodged to his right but saw the right straight was a fake and a left hook was about to slam into his face. Naruto ducked under and gave Mizuki an uppercut and a back kick to the gut. Nice work Naruto. Mizuki lighten up on him you are being too aggressive he is still an academy student, said Iruka. Naruto went on the offensive and faked a right hook but instead of throwing a right hook he dropped down and sweeped Mizuki who was expecting a right hook. On the ground Naruto tried to jump on Mizuki and mount him but was kicked off. Both fighters got back up and got ready to fight again. Mizuki decided to be the aggressor this time and moved so fast none of the other students could see. Naruto's eyes flashed red. Sharingan, for a second before dodging the right straight and sending a bone crushing punch to Mizuki's ribs. Mizuki fell back, gripping the area Naruto punched. Nice punch, kid. Both fighters got back into their stances. The spar was either five minutes or first knockout. Since against most of the other students, neither instructors were going for the knockout, so it was just five minutes of fighting. Naruto had a plan in his mind. Naruto ran up to Mizuki and threw a right straight hoping Mizuki would be arrogant and catch the punch which he did. Naruto that was such an easy to catch punch, Mizuki said smugly. Naruto then slid under Mizuki's legs. Mizuki didn't want to let go of Naruto so he held on and ended up hitting himself on the balls. The blow to his nuts wasn't too hard so he didn't fall over but instead was bent over. Naruto then jumped on his back and put him in a rear naked chokehold and squeezed really tight. Um. Is it okay to hit someone in the balls sensei? Kiba asked. Well no but Mizuki hit himself in the balls so I don't know. Mizuki was having a hard time getting the kid off. He even slammed him on the ground multiple times but his grip was still strong and he was feeling slightly dizzy. Mizuki tried to grab his hands or something to pull on but was unable to reach. Eventually Mizuki fell unconscious and Aruka told him to release the hold and checked Mizuki's pulse to see if he was still alive. Good job Naruto. That ball hit was dirty though. But you already proved you were ready to be a genin before that. Thanks sensei. When Mizuki awoke he was furious. He was furious but he couldn't do anything about it. He started to plan for something else to get rid of that Kayubi brat. Okay we will have our ninjutsu test now. For this exam you have to do the Kawarimi no jutsu, Henj no jutsu, any type of Bunshin no jutsu, and one non-academy jutsu. The ninjutsu exam was insanely easy 90% of the class was able to do the requirements. Uchiha Sasuke your turn. Sasuke did the kawarimi first and replaced himself with the log in the corner then hanged into Aruka then made three perfect bunshins. For his non-academy jutsu he asked if he could do it outside. He did his katan. Gokaku no jutsu and impressed the whole class. Naruto wasn't impressed it was just a simple but effective fire jutsu. Uzumaki Naruto your turn. Naruto was feeling the prankster fever. He 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 this is going to be hilarious. First Naruto Kawaramid with the log then did a sealless cage bunshin and created five shadow clones. Aruka was proud of his student. He was a troublemaker but he was a good student. Then he saw the grin. The grin. 
Every time Naruto grinned like that that means he was going to prank someone. Aruka was too late. Henge. A large amount of smoke was produced. As the smoke subsided there were five naked teenage blonde girls. They had their hair in two ponytails, had Naruto's signature whisker marks were completely naked and had 36 C-cup breasts and only a tiny wisp of smoke was covering the non-existent nipples. Two of the blonde girls were holding on to Aruka and two were holding on to Mizuki and the last naked blonde girl was posing in the center of the class. All the males in the class flew back because of the intense nosebleed and the girls were very angry that someone would perform a jutsu like that. Aruka had trouble stopping the blood while Mizuki was passed out with a perverted grin. Aruka started shaking Mizuki after the technique was over yelling. What would Tsubaki say? Naruto. Be serious. Now do a jutsu that isn't from the academy. He 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 this will get that teme. Boar, dog, bird, monkey, ram. Kachiyo say no jutsu. Naruto slammed down a smoke bomb. Karasu Bunshin no jutsu. Then he hanged the crow clone into a taller Itachi wearing his anbu gear with the sharingan. What the fuck why is there so much smoke? Said one student. What kind of jutsu is that? Said another student. As the smoke cleared they saw a man wearing anbu gear with the sharingan eyes. Those who knew who the man was felt the blood leaving their face. When Sasuke saw who was there in the classroom he went bat shit crazy. He was desperately trying to get out of his seat to run out the door but he was blocked in by the fangirls so he jumped up on the table and as he tried to run the man grabbed his hand. Sasuke turned around and saw his older brother looking at him with the sharingan. Are you here to finish the job? Sasuke yelled. Kiba could smell the poo in Sasuke's pants. And everyone saw the yellow liquid that was running down his leg. You are not worth killing. You are pathetic said the hanged crow clone. Naruto dispelled the clone and crows flew out the window. Sasuke passed out from the fear. Iruka was standing there dumbstruck. Mizuki was still passed out from the haremu no jutsu. Was that Itachi Uchiha? Suddenly six anbu entered the room. Was Itachi Uchiha seen in this room? It was just a crow clone, Naruto answered. Naruto handed the anbu a note and asked him to give it to the Hokage and it was for the Hokage's eyes only. Did I pass? asked Naruto. Aruka was looking at Naruto still dumbstruck. All the males in the room started laughing at Sasuke because he passed out in a pool of his own piss. Kiba was howling in laughter saying, he shit himself and wet his pants. Um Naruto what did you just do? I know for a fact that you cannot summon a human being using the summoning jutsu. Um well you see I slammed down a smoke bomb created a crow clone then hanged it into Itachi Uchiha. Naruto. Why would you do that? How do you even know what he looks like? Yelled Iruka. It was a prank. And I used to be his friend. Naruto said. We will be back. Iruka said before grabbing Naruto and dragging him out of the room and shun shining into the front of the Hokage's door. The Hokage is waiting for you. Said the secretary who winked at Iruka. Iruka was taken back by the wink. Now that he thought about it the secretary was pretty hot. She was in her twenties had black hair and had a really nice body. What time do you get off work? Aruka asked. Seven. You shouldn't keep the Hokage waiting. CYA at seven. Aruka was so happy and mad at the same time. He was mad because of Naruto's prank but he was also happy because he got a date because of it. Hokage sama Naruto here pulled a very messed up prank on Sasuke, Aruka said. Naruto why did you do that? Said Serutobi. I don't know I wanted to scare Sasuke. I didn't think that would happen. Naruto said. What are we going to do? Said Aruka. Naruto don't do pranks like that. Or better yet stop doing pranks. Aruka will escort you back to the room and you will have to clean it up. Fuck. Okay. Naruto said. Hokage sama will Naruto graduate? I don't know what to do. Yes he will graduate. He passed everything right? And technically he did perform a non-academy jutsu. Hi. Aruka said before shun shining with Naruto back into the classroom. Naruto, that was insanely insensitive. Hey it got you a date. Shut up Naruto. Go back to your seat, Yamanaka Ino. Ino went down and performed the ninjutsu test and passed. 35 academy students passed and became genin. Everyone but Naruto can go. Aruka said. They had moved Sasuke's unconscious body outside and had Naruto clean up the mess he made. 
After he cleaned up Sasuke's urine Aruka handed him his headband. Naruto tied the headband around his forehead and walked out. I guess I did overdo it. But it was hilarious. As he took a step outside there were a lot of fangirls waiting for him. He booked it out of there. While running away he met up with his friends. Hey guys, Naruto said. Naruto, I can't believe you did that, said an angry Ino. Naruto that was really messed up, said fangirl Sakura who was hitting him. I know I'm going to apologize to him tomorrow. Naruto, that was gold man. He shit and pissed himself. Kiba said while laughing and he gave Naruto a high five. You guys are disgusting, said Sakura before she left. Yeah that was really insensitive, said Ino. I bet it was quite troublesome cleaning that up, said Shikamaru. Choji didn't say anything while he kept on eating. I thought it was pretty funny Naruto-kun, said Amy who was trying to get close to Naruto to touch him. She wants the D bro, said Kiba. Shut up, yelled Amy as she tried to kick Kiba's ass. CYA guys I'ma go home and just hang out till tomorrow, said Naruto. Next day, alright so I took my picture so now I need to go back to our room to wait for our Jonin sensei. Naruto made his way to the academy and sat in his classroom waiting for the team assignments. Chunin plus meeting. Yes it is that time of year again. This year of academy students have graduated and are going to be put in one of your guys teams. Serutobi went over the first six teams and their Jonin senseis. Team 7 will be lead by Hitaki Kakashi, Team 8 will be lead by Yuhi Kuranai, Team 9 is still active under Maida Guy, Team 10 will be lead by Serutobi Asuma. Oh dear we have a problem. We have one more Genin team that doesn't have a sensei, how unfortunate. Well I'm not a Jonin but I've always wanted a Genin team, said Shiranui Genma. Since you are only a Tokabetsu Jonin I cannot let you become a sensei alone, said Serutobi. Well I'll be his co-sensei, said Namiyashi Reido. I too will be his co-sensei, said Yamashiro Aoba. Well I guess team 13 isn't as unfortunate as I thought. They might be the luckiest team ever. Okay I'll allow it. In the classroom Aruka was calling off the teams to the students. Team 7 consists of Uchiha Sasuke, Haruno Sakura. Yes. True love never fails. Eat that Ino pig, said Sakura. As I was saying the last member is Mamanaku Shinen and your Jonin sensei is Hitaki Kakashi. Lucky you guys get Kakashi sensei, said Naruto. Naruto you know Kakashi? asked Sakura. Sakura was still mad at Naruto for what happened yesterday but she needed to know what her sensei would be like. Well he was a good teacher to me, taught me some good stuff. Team 8 consists of Abarame Shino, Inazuka Kiba, Hayuga Hanada, and will be lead by Yuhi Kuranai. Kiba tried to give Shino a high five but Shino just looked at him. Hanada was quite pleased that her sensei would be Kuranai. Team 9 is still active from last year. Team 10 will consist of Nara Shikamaru, Akamichi Choji, Yamanaka Ino, and you will be lead by Serutobi Asuma. I bet this is because of my father. I was chosen for a team before I could walk, said Ino angrily. Troublesome woman. Well at least I have Choji, said Shikamaru. Choji said something incoherent because he was eating at the same time. Iruka then said who was in team 11 and 12 and who their sensei were. And we have team 13 will consist of Uzumaki Naruto, and Amy and your team will be lead by what the hell? To be announced. The kids ate lunch then went back in the room to wait for their sensei. I wonder why we are only two on one team. And I wonder who our sensei is? Naruto said. Maybe they realized that you and I are too good for a third member. They would only get in the way, Amy said. Team 8 come with me. A black haired woman with red eyes that wore bandages for clothing. Team 10 come with me, said a tanned black haired man with spiky hair and a beard. All the teams left except Team 7 and Team 13. While they were wondering where their sensei were some green haired kid with brown eyes wearing a brown shirt that says, this guy, on the front. The kid was looking around then fixed his eyes on Naruto. The guy walked up to Naruto and asked him a question. Naruto is that you? Asked the green haired guy. Hey do I know you from somewhere? Naruto said. I almost didn't know who you were from your clothes, it's me Kenji. What the fuck? Seriously? Talk about a reunion, Naruto said. You asshole you remember Naruto but not me, said Amy. Hey Amy what's up? Did you get adopted too? 
Amy was strangely quiet and looked down. Oh shit I'm sorry I didn't know. It's fine I'll be moving into the Genin apartments today after we meet our sensei. We should go out to eat tonight. Naruto said. Asking me for another date. Amy said. Just like old times eh? Kenji said. Wait why are you here? Naruto asked. Well I've technically been Genin for a year but I wasn't able to get on a team so they put me on one this year. Well the other teams have left which team are you on? Amy asked. Team 13. No way dude. You are on our team. Sweet. Naruto said. Ah and I thought I would have Naruto for myself. Keep your hands off him. What? Kenji said. She's just fucking with you. Right after he said that three men walked in. One had spiky black hair and wore red sunglasses. The second one had his bandana on backwards, had brown hair and eyes, and he was chewing on a senbon. The third one has weird wrinkles from the middle of his nose to his cheek. We are here to pick up Team 13. The people on Team 13 had eyes as wide as plates. No team has ever had more than two sensei and they get three. They quickly walked up to them and followed them to Training Area 26. Training Area 26, okay let's introduce ourselves. My name is Shiranui Genma, I am a Tokabetsu Janin. My likes are Senbon, making jokes, and Winjutsu. I hate power hungry bitches, people without a sense of humor, and spinach. My goals I guess are to have a successful Genin team and become Janin one day. Well my name is Yamashiro Aoba, I too am a Tokabetsu Janin. My likes are crows, messing around and joking, and fire jutsu. I hate those who look down on Tokabetsu Janin, people that try to be funny but they're not, and really cocky people. And my goal is to show people that Tokabetsu Janin could teach as well if not better than regular or elite Janin. My name is Reido Namiyashi and my rank is also Tokabetsu Janin. My likes are my friends, my sword, and earth jutsu. I hate annoying people, those who are disrespectful, and enemies who like to monologue when they think they have won. My goal is to help you guys become good ninja and I guess become a janin. My name is Uzumaki Naruto. My likes are my friends, ramen, and training to get stronger. I hate people who have various objects lodged up their butt, those who believe they are superior due to their family, and I hate rapists, child molesters and other bad people. My goal is to become the Hokage one day and protect my home and its inhabitants. My name is Amy, only Amy. I dropped my last name when I moved to the orphanage. I wouldn't mind becoming Uzumaki Amy in the future though. I like Naruto and my other friends, having a good time, and Dango is pretty good. I hate those who put people down for no reason, those people who look at Naruto weird when we go out to eat, and those who think they are better than others. My dreams for the future are to become a good Kunoichi and become Mrs. Uzumaki. The three Jonin looked at each other understanding the silent message. Uzumaki has a fangirl. Hi my name is Kenji I like my friends, adoptive family, and finally having a genin team and janin senseis. I hate D-rank missions, those who pay for D-rank missions, and those who decided that D-ranks are mandatory for genin. Sorry it is just that I have been doing D-rank missions for a year now, sure it is good money but I'm tired of it. My goals are to show people that you do not have to belong to a shinobi clan to become a successful ninja. Well I'm sad to inform you that you will have to do some D-rank missions as a team. Sorry. Said Genma. Anyways, right now we would normally perform some kind of exam to test if you guys are ready to become Genin. But we have decided we like you guys and we will pass you, but we will be doing one version one spars to test your abilities by yourself. Alright, I guess I'll test Kenji. Follow me, please, said Reido before walking over behind the trees to the left side. Mrs. Uzumaki, would you kindly follow me? said Aoba while walking over behind the trees on the right side of the training ground. Aoba sensei I'm a guy and I'm definitely not a married woman, said Naruto. Oh not you. Mrs. Uzumaki not Mr. Uzumaki, Aoba said with a grin. Amy skipped happily and followed Aoba. She was happy that she was called Mrs. Uzumaki. Alright hotshot you're with me right here, Genma said. Ten minutes later, test is over. Alright you guys seem to be a pretty good bunch of genin. Amy you need to work on your taijutsu a little bit. You are lacking strength but that can be fixed. But your shuriken jutsu and genjutsu were pretty good, I didn't even know they taught genjutsu at the academy. Your ninjutsu was also pretty good, your clone usage was perfect and your kawarimis were good as well. If I were to rate you right now I would put you at a newer genin level, which is not anything bad since you just graduated the academy, said Aoba. 
Wow Amy I never knew you were so good, said Naruto. Amy blushed at the compliment Naruto gave her. Well Kenji your taijutsu and ninjutsu were pretty solid. And by the way your fighting with your dual kanai was pretty good. I honestly have not seen a person use an enlarged kanai, a big kanai. Size comparable to a short sword, in a while. It is a dying style since short swords or tantos are lighter and easier to carry but it's refreshing to see an old style resurface. Your shuri kenjutsu was average at best, you were not very accurate. And your genjutsu was pretty bad. You seem more like a short range fighter than anything which is not a bad thing at all. Said Rado. So that big kanai on your back is called an enlarged kanai. Why didn't you just get a bigger knife or short sword? Asked Amy. Well my adoptive dad gave it to me so I wanted to use it. That's cool, unusual weapons are good since not many people will know how it works, said Naruto. Naruto I was quite surprised with your performance. If I had never seen you before and sparred like that I would assume you have been genin for a while and will possibly be taking the chunin exams. Your taijutsu style was one I had never seen before. Sometimes it was a very quick style which aimed to hit vital spots in some sort of assassination taijutsu style and sometimes it would become very powerful strikes with punches and kicks which remind me of guys goken style. You also threw in some kind of weird grappling taijutsu, those knees were deadly. You showed a variety of ninjutsu that I have no idea how you could have learned. Have you been doing elemental training since you performed some earth jutsu? You also seem to have big chakra reserves considering that you spent like half of the fight chucking ninjutsu at me non-stop. You were not able to perform genjutsu or at least didn't try to which is acceptable since genjutsu isn't gone over much in the academy. But you were able to dispel AC rank genjutsu that I put on you. If I were to put you up with the other kids your age I wouldn't be surprised if you beat them. The only ones I think that have a chance of beating you are Hayuga Neji and Uchiha Sasuke if he unlocks his Sharingan, said Genma. Well that was a pretty good assessment but I was holding back a bit. I only used my earth jutsu and kept my fire a secret. I also didn't use my siren to and only used C rank ninjutsu. Although if I went all out I would probably be around a semi experienced chunin level. Thought Naruto. Since we now know about your individual abilities and such we would like to train you guys to learn how to do elemental manipulation. This is normally a chunin level thing or experienced genin level thing but we would like to get you started early with lower ranked jutsu. I assume Naruto is a earth user because of those techniques he showed me. We will show you how to know if which elemental affinities you were born with, most people are born with one affinity but some are born with two or none, said Rado. Rado handed Aoba and Genma a piece of chakra paper and all three of them channeled chakra into the paper at the same time. Rado's paper crinkled slightly before turning into dust. Aoba's paper got wet in the corner before being set ablaze. Genma's paper received two cuts and got a little wet. As you can see I have a strong wind affinity with a tiny water affinity which I learned over the years. Aoba on the other hand has the a strong fire affinity with a small water affinity that he must have picked up over time. Rado on the other hand has an earth affinity with a decent affinity with lightning, he was one of the lucky few to have two elemental affinities at birth, said Genma. Genma asked Rado to give the kids each a piece of chakra paper and explain to them how to do it. Kenji went first and channeled chakra into the paper. As he channeled chakra into the paper it crinkled showing his affinity for lighting. Hum lightning eh, that one is not very common here, said Rado. Naruto-kun this paper will show you how I feel when you look at me. I hope I get fire or earth or something cool. Then I can tell him he ignites a passion in me or his beautiful eyes makes my legs crumble. Amy channeled her chakra into the paper and it got soaked. The Janin senseis laughed really hard when they found out her affinity. Naruto didn't really understand although he was slightly perverted he didn't really know much about the female body. Oh my Naruto-kun, apparently when you look at me I get wet. Amy said seductively. Well that is not good. Um do you need help finding a restroom? Naruto said since he thought she peed herself or was in the process of peeing herself. Yes will you escort me to the restroom and give me what I desire? Amy said. Naruto assumed she really needed to go to the restroom. I'm sure I think the restroom is this way, Naruto said. Naruto-kun is it okay if we do it at your house or my house? Oh I guess you aren't comfortable using a public restroom. That's fine public restrooms are kind of gross anyways. I think your house would be better since you need to change your pants after wetting yourself. Said the oblivious Naruto. Alright, 
That's enough. Amy, stop trying to take advantage of Naruto when he has no idea what you are talking about. We still need to know Naruto's affinity even though we are pretty sure he is an earth user. Naruto before channeling chakra into the paper reached inside his pocket and pulled out his sunglasses. He wanted to activate his Sharingan so he can see what Itachi and Kakashi saw when they checked him five years ago. He activated his Sharingan and channeled chakra into his eyes while he also channeled chakra into the paper. Since Naruto only had a two tomo Sharingan he couldn't see as well as Kakashi or Itachi. He saw the paper get cut multiple times into tiny pieces before the tiny pieces just disintegrated. The three Tokabetsu Janin were looking wondering what happened. Genma was the first to speak because he felt some wind chakra being used. Um I think he has a very powerful affinity to wind chakra. Congratulations Naruto you have the rarest element in the land of fire, said Genma. Um I'm not too sure about that. I felt some heat emanating from where the paper was. He might have fire and wind, said Aoba. Well I don't know how to detect fire chakra so I don't know, said Genma. Well this is very confusing because I felt like there was some earth chakra in there. I don't know though because it was so fast, said Rado. Um sensei I recommend you talk to the Hokage about this. He will be able to give you guys the information you need, said Naruto. Um okay. You guys can just spar or something till we get back. Genma said. The three shunshine to the Hokage's office. Naruto deactivated his Sharingan and put away his sunglasses. He got into his Taijutsu stance and confused the other two. Who are you going to spar first? asked Amy. Why not both of you? said Naruto before the three started fighting. In the Hokage's office, the three Tokabetsu Janin asked about one of their students. The Hokage filled them in about his elemental affinities and how he was probably holding back during their fight because the Hokage was sure Naruto trained with fire before learning Earth. He also told them about how Naruto has already experienced his first kill and he told them the details on why he had to do it. The three Tokabetsu Janin were surprised that Naruto had three elemental affinities and a person would try to do that to a child and felt bad for Naruto because he was forced to kill someone at such a young age. After speaking with the Hokage the three Tokabetsu Janin headed back to Training Ground 26. Training Ground 26 Naruto ducked under a right hook that was thrown by Kenji. After ducking he snapped Kenji's head back with two quick jabs before he had to jump up because Amy tried to sweep him. Amy and Kenji were both using the academy style taijutsu since they had no other choice. The academy style taijutsu was a solid taijutsu style since it is very easy to learn and almost everyone could do it. The problem was against Naruto's style they stood no chance especially since they didn't have any teamwork. It was basically one version 1 then another one version 1 after which Naruto's style was very good at. Amy rushed forward and jumped in the air and attempted to hit Naruto with a front kick. Naruto easily blocked but he was wondering why Amy would do that. Unless it was a distraction. Naruto caught the plan quickly and ducked and weaved as Kenji started assaulting him. Naruto took a few hits here and there but nothing that would hurt a lot. Naruto had an idea he ran up to both of them which surprised them since he had been on the defensive the whole time. Naruto looked like he was going to punch Kenji in the face but right before he would have walked close enough to punch him he dropped on the ground and kicked Kenji in the chin upward. Amy saw Naruto on the ground so she tried to hit him with an axe kick. Naruto rolled to the side and got up. Kenji hit the ground not very gracefully. Naruto knew now that Kenji would be a little bit slower now from the damage he just took. Naruto then rushed forward dodging the sidekick Amy shot at him and ducked under Kenji's right straight and grabbed a mound of flesh that was very close to Amy's butt, her leg is still in the air because of the sidekick. And pushed her causing her to fall down. Kenji trying to barrage Naruto with a flurry of punches. He had hit Naruto quite a bit but he made a mistake by slowing down. When he attempted to hit Naruto with a left straight Naruto put his right arm forward to block the punch while allowing him to put his hand behind Kenji's head. Naruto then pulled him close and delivered a powerful uppercut to his chin which knocked Kenji back a few feet and didn't give him enough time to block Naruto's flying knee to the chest which shot Kenji into a nearby tree knocking him out. Since Naruto had been focusing on Kenji he was not able to react in time as Amy hit him with her most powerful right straight. Naruto took a few steps backwards and did his best blocking her punches. A few punches snaked its way in but didn't do too much damage since Amy didn't have that much strength. Naruto was ducking and weaving until he could find a break in her combo, 
He found one after he ducked under her left straight and threw a quick left jab to her face. He ducked again under her right hook and landed a quick right hook into an uppercut. She started backing up then Naruto dashed forward for a takedown since she was blocking every inch of her upper body. Naruto was able to take her down and mounted her. Oh my Naruto. I didn't know you were like that. Said a voice behind him. When Naruto turned around Kakashi was looking at him smiling. The only way to tell if Kakashi is smiling is if his eye is in some kind of upside down U shape. Naruto didn't know what he was talking about until he turned around and saw Amy blushing at how close his package was to her face. He then realized what Kakashi was implying and quickly jumped off. I didn't do anything I swear. Naruto yelled. Naruto. I can't believe you tried to do that to me. Amy said with pretend tears in her eyes. Naruto I thought you were better than that. Kakashi teased. That was an accident. We were sparring. We were sparring then after you knocked out Kenji you thought you could take advantage of me. Said Amy pretending to cry again. But. Dot but. It's okay Naruto. I know your hormones may be acting up once in a while but you can't do that to a girl. Naruto you owe me. I was so scared. Said Amy. I'll do anything. Just forget about what happened there. Okay. Said Amy happily. Ha ha sucker. Amy thought. Reido, Genma, and Aoba shunshined right next to Kakashi and was wondering what happened. They looked around to see an unconscious Kenji under a tree a very happy Amy and a very embarrassed Naruto with Kakashi there. What happened? Asked Genma. Well nothing much. I just came here and found one guy unconscious and the other guy on top of the girl. You know no big deal right? Said Kakashi. Honestly I bet she liked it. Said Aoba with a smirk. Hey. Yelled Amy. No kidding, she was probably mad when you said something and made him get off. For another 20 minutes they continued to tease Naruto and Amy. After they were finished teasing and Kenji woke up they told Amy to spar with Kenji while they reevaluate Naruto. Naruto the Sandame told us you were holding back in the last spar. Just fight me like you mean it. I won't make you leave the team or anything. This will just show us what we should teach you. Um Genma Sensei. I need help to do wind jutsu. I don't know how to turn my chakra into wind chakra. Okay we will do elemental training after our spar. Naruto went into his taijutsu stance to show he was ready. Genma went into his and surprisingly Genma still used a more advanced form of the academy style. Naruto ran forward while dropping his weights. The weights weren't too heavy he only had 25 pounds on each limb but they doubled his speed since he is normally only weighing like 105 pounds. Naruto was running so fast he looked like he had four legs. To a civilian or a genin he was really hard to follow because of his speed but to a chunin or janin they can see him fine. Naruto ran and threw a fake right hook at Genma before running behind him and trying to kick him. Genma blocked it by quickly turning around after he noticed Naruto disappear. Naruto kept trying his luck at getting a hit on Genma by tricking him but Genma saw through all of his attempts. This was standard since Genma was a tokabetsu janin and he was just a recently graduated genin. Naruto then created five shadow clones and sent them towards Genma to try to find a weakness in his style. Genma easily dispelled each clone and looked at Naruto and told him to come at him. Naruto realized that his clones sent him information about Genma's style. Naruto repeated using the clones four times until he thought he had a chance to slip through Genma's defense. Naruto again created some clones and charged with them. As the first clone and second clone charged forward both getting dispelled easily Naruto kicked Genma in the chin because he couldn't see from the smoke. As Genma flew in the air Naruto threw 10 shuriken at him and performed hand seals. Shuriken cage bunshin no jutsu, you know what this is. The 10 shuriken multiplied into 100. After the shuriken multiplied Naruto performed more hand seals. Genma was in mid-air so he was unable to dodge so he resorted to ninjutsu. Futon. Repusho, Gale Palm. Genma blew the shuriken that were headed towards him away. Little did he know he was not yet safe. Katen. Gokaku no Jutsu, Grand Fireball. Genma was still in mid-air so he still couldn't dodge. There was also no nearby water source for him to do any of his low-level water jutsu and his affinity wasn't strong enough to pull water from the air. He also was too far to see anything nearby to Kawarimi with. Since he had no choice he used the Shunshin no Jutsu, Body Flicker. 
Shunshuns are normally used to travel quickly because of the burst of speed it gives you but it also uses a large amount of chakra and lets the opponent know where you end up because of the large amount of chakra used. Naruto saw that Genma shunshine behind him so he jumped forward and did a front flip while spinning clockwise and threw a barrage of shuriken and kanai while in mid-air. Nice trick Naruto. Not too many genin can do flashy stuff like that. Said Genma while blocking the kanai and shuriken with two of his kanai knives. Naruto unsealed his siren to and pulled out a kanai on his left hand. He dashed directly at Genma. Naruto did a horizontal swipe with his siren to right hand, which Genma ducked. As his blade missed Genma he used the momentum caused by the slash to drive his kanai down hard. Genma saw this and brought up his two kanai in a X position to catch the blow. Naruto's blow had a lot of strength in it and almost made it past the kanai. After his blow was blocked he jumped back and did a few back flips and put his kanai on his mouth. Naruto summoned five clones and performed hand seals. Doden. Tsunabakori, dust cloud. As he said this he slammed his hands on the ground kicking up the dust and making it hard to see and breath. Naruto took out the kanai from his mouth with his left hand and ran into the giant cloud of dust with his shadow clones. Genma had no idea where Naruto would come from so he decided to get rid of the dust. Futon. Daitopa after performing the jutsu he noticed he knocked away two shadow clones which dispelled and there were only three Naruto's standing. They all charged at the same time trying to cut the tokabetsu janin. He was backing up and blocking the three Naruto's until he noticed he was only fighting two. He looked all around him but didn't see a sign. When he looked up Naruto was going to nail him with an axe kick. He did back flips to get away. Then he saw the all of the Naruto's run at him but he had an idea. As the first two ran up to him he ducked and spun in clockwise motion to dispel the two clones. Before he was going to charge at the last Naruto a hand from underground pulled him down and the other Naruto swung his siren to burrito at Genma's neck. After the impact was made Naruto realized he cut a log in half. Naruto then heard leaves rustling behind him. He turned around and blocked with his kanai. A senbon had lodged itself halfway inside Naruto's kanai. What the fuck? Naruto said before he was about to be hailed by Senbons. Doden. Doryuheki Naruto spit out some mud in front of him and it hardened to create a wall. The wall was able to block all the Senbons but when he looked where Genma was before he got kicked in the back and skidded a few feet. Naruto charged at Genma and they fought a fierce battle of Taijutsu. Naruto saw Genma throw a right straight so he ducked under it jabbed Genma on the left side of his face and created a shadow clone behind Genma. Genma was shocked that Naruto landed a hit so he took a step back but instead got tripped by the shadow clone behind him. Naruto saw him fall and felt like he had the advantage and could capitalize on it. Naruto jumped on top of the fallen Genma and hit him with his right hand. Naruto mounted him and started pounding him as much as he could. Genma was trying to dodge from under while in the full guard position. Naruto got a few decent blows before Genma kicked him off. Both fighters got up and got back into their stances. Naruto ran at him and midway created a shadow clone which jumped up and tried to kick Genma in the face but was dispelled. Genma found out it was a distraction when the original Naruto kicked both of his legs causing him to fall. Naruto got up and chucked a barrage of shuriken at Genma who was forced to Kawarimi with a log. Naruto saw that there was a slight distance between them and started going through hand seals. Naruto at this point was quite tired and although he still had a good amount of chakra left he was going to try to finish it. Doden. Sekachu Torapu, Stone Pillar Trap, Five Stone Pillars came out of the ground and held Genma in place. Wow how does he know this jutsu? I remember some Iwa Nin used this on me before. Naruto created a shadow clone and both of them furiously did hand seals while pouring chakra into his lungs and coating his trachea and all the way up to his mouth with chakra. He did this since his next fire attack would be pumped with a ton of chakra and he didn't want to hurt himself. He held his breath for as long as possible trying to get as much chakra into the next jutsu as possible since the next jutsu took a large amount of chakra to do since it was a B-ranked ninjutsu. Kaden. Suindoragambaresu, Twin Dragon Breath. Naruto had put a large amount of chakra behind the technique and both he and his clones spit out a large stream of blue fire each. When the two streams of blue fire met it expanded greatly and destroyed the forest in front of him. The fire was so hot the trees burned down within seconds of touching the blue fire. If it had been human flesh it would not have lasted long under the intense heat. 
Naruto was scared since he thought he killed his sensei. He only had recently been practicing the said technique and he kept overloading it with chakra because he had not mastered it yet. Naruto? Are you trying to kill me? Kami that was a hot fire. Well you did pretty well. I was holding back a little bit and let you be the aggressor. If you had more experience and got physically stronger and faster which will happen naturally as you grow you would easily be able to beat many experienced chunin. Right now you can definitely hang with or defeat the newer chunin to the mildly experienced chunin. Like I said you will still be on our genin team and we won't remove you or anything. As Genma finished his sentence the other two genin on their team came running in. What happened? You guys left us to spar there then suddenly we saw some pretty blue fire and smoke from here. Amy said. Aoba sensei was that you? Asked Kenji. Uh no well Naruto and Genma had a redo of their test because we found out Naruto was holding back a bit. And Naruto ended up doing this jutsu and burning the forest over there. Aoba said while pointing at the black land that used to be a forested area. Kenji looked at Naruto like he had two heads and Amy was looking at him with sparkles on her eyes. Okay. We will now show you how to manipulate your elements, said Rado. For the next three hours they performed exercises which helped them be able to manipulate their elements. Naruto was told to do the leaf cutting exercise since he already knew how to do fire and earth. Amy was brought to the lake where Aoba told her to try to feel the water then try to create a small twister in the water. Kenji was told to try to create lightning chakra and release it to a nearby tree. At the end of the three hours each one of them had a better idea of how to use their elements but they wouldn't be taught jutsu for a while. Alright guys, good work today. Tomorrow meet up here at 9am be sure you pack lunch and eat a good breakfast since we will be working you into the ground tomorrow. Said Genma before the three tokabetsu janin left for the janin bar. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze age, 12 rank, Genin that night. Naruto would have normally invited Amy and Kenji to go out to eat dinner but he was feeling tired. As he was walking home he felt some one dashing over his head. He quickly looked up and saw a person with a bandana carrying a large scroll. Normally if he saw a ninja walking around with a giant scroll it would appear normal but that guy was in a real hurry. Naruto decided to follow that guy to check him out. He quickly put on his sunglasses and activated his Sharingan so he could see a chakra path to follow. Naruto noticed the path of chakra was heading outside the village. Upon seeing this Naruto took off after the man. Naruto was able to catch up to the man after following him for 15 minutes since Naruto put more chakra per hop while he was chasing. Two miles away from Konoha border. Finally I was able to get this stupid scroll for Orochimaru. Good thing I planned this the day the Jonin instructors give their genin exams. All the elite ninja are probably drunk right now. As he finished his sentence a barrage of shuriken rained on his position. Mizuki was able to dodge them all but two. One was lodged in his right thigh and the other was lodged on his left arm on the left side of the forearm. Mizuki looked where the projectiles came from and saw one of his former students chucking more shuriken at him. Since he saw the attack coming he simply blocked with his two kanai knives. Oh if it isn't Uzumaki Naruto. You lost kid? Doesn't matter because you will die here you demon. I will avenge all those who were killed by you Kayubi. Said Mizuku while he charged at Naruto with his two kanai. Cool story bro. Why don't you publish it and sell it to people who actually give a fuck? Said Naruto as he unsealed his siren to and wielded a kanai on his left hand. Mizuki slashed at Naruto like a madman. Naruto kept backing up and trying to parry some of the hits. After noticing that the chunin would definitely beat him if this continued he put the kanai in his mouth and threw three shuriken and performed hand seals. Shuriken cage bunch and no jutsu the three shuriken turned into 30 and Mizuki was forced to use ninjutsu to block. Sweden. Junsai, water shield. Water was drained from a gourd of water on Mizuki's back and formed a shield of water which stopped the incoming shuriken. After blocking the shuriken and cancelling his defensive jutsu he looked around for Naruto and was unable to find anything. After looking around he got kicked in the back and flew forward into another Naruto who came out of the ground and tried to stab Mizuki using a chakra enhanced siren to Barreto stab. Mizuki used his two kanai to deflect the blow down slightly so he wouldn't take a strike at his vital organs. Instead of plunging into his heart the siren to Barreto pierced his through stomach and cut through his spinal cord. Mizuki then stabbed the Naruto in front of him with one of his kanais and it dispelled in smoke. Mizuki fell on the ground since his spinal cord was severed. Naruto created 100 clones and sent them to knock out the traitorous Chunin. 
The Chunin was able to take out a large amount of clones using various water jutsu he learned over the years. Unfortunately for Mizuki he was unable to dispel all of the clones and was knocked out and tied up with ninja wire. Naruto took the scroll of sealing and decided to look inside. Naruto realized that the scroll Mizuki tried to steal was one that contained many powerful kinjutsu of Konoha. Naruto decided to use his Sharingan to quickly memorize how to do three jutsu before he closed the scroll and headed back to Konoha. He decided to only take three jutsu since he knew that he didn't have much time before the Anbu found him so he wanted to copy only a small amount of jutsu so it looked like he didn't look at the scroll at all. Naruto headed towards Konoha with a tied up Mizuki and the scroll of seals. Eventually Naruto reached the Hokage Tower and dropped off Mizuki and the scroll of seals to the Hokage. Hokage Tower, Gigi I have a present for you, said Naruto as he showed him the tied up Mizuki and the scroll of seals. Why thank you Naruto, I know you already got your award but I will also give you the pay for a B rank mission. Good work, said Hiruzen while handing Naruto an envelope with money. Oh by the way Mizuki will never be able to walk again, and you should get him medical attention if you don't want him to die from bleeding out. Thanks for the information Naruto. Okay CYA Gigi. Naruto said as he jumped out of the Hokage's window. Seriously? Why does nobody use the door? Asked Hiruzen. Next day Naruto had just woken up from a nightmare. He felt like shit and looked at his alarm clock. 5.25 AM. Way too early to do anything. Naruto had a nightmare about the hidden leaf village a very odd nightmare. It was almost like he was in a different dimension where he had no friends, no Gigi, nothing. Nightmare Naruto woke up and looked around, this was not his home. Compared to the condo this place he awoke to was tiny, it was a one bedroom studio with only one bathroom and a small kitchen. He thought something was up but noticed it was time to meet up with his team. He got ready and left and jumped on the rooftops to avoid the people looking at him. When he arrived at training ground 26 there was none of his team members in sight. He waited an hour and nobody came. Since he had no idea what was going on he decided he would go get some ramen at Ichiraku's. He noticed that all of his friends from the academy were near the ramen stand. He had no idea why but he decided he would go ask. When he went to talk to people he was friends with, they looked at him like the other people did, even his friends from the orphanage like Amy and Kenji looked at him that way. He didn't understand why they were looking at him that way. He hated the way the people looked at him and what made it worse was the voice that kept telling him to kill was louder than ever, almost like it was being amplified by an intense amount of hatred. In the dream he wasn't able to hold off the urge to kill, he went wild, and lost consciousness. Upon waking he noticed surrounding him was black earth with signs of destruction. Rubble littered the black earth, there were bodies laid out all over, and it was not pretty. Some bodies were mutilated, split into pieces, charred. He looked around and he recognized some of the bodies, he saw a body wearing the robes that his Gigi always wears face down. He noticed three bodies together and although their faces were ripped off or melted by some sort of fire. The first body had its face ripped off by some sort of beast who clawed the mon's face off, although it would normally be unidentifiable the backwards bandana hata ate and the senbon needle near his corpse, it was Genma. The second body had no head to begin with, but the body was easily identifiable by the blade next to the man, it was a pitch black blade only one man wielded a pitch black blade, Rado. The third body was the hardest to identify since it was ripped in half and the face was split in two horizontally. Naruto eventually found the top half of the mon's head and recognized the red sunglasses, it was Aoba. Naruto began to cry, he had not known his sensei for a long time but seeing them like this made him cry. He wondered if he was the one who did all of this but was shaken from the thought when he heard a coughing sound. He ran towards the direction of the coughing and saw something he wished he didn't see. His friends, they were all on the ground many decimated into pieces. Ino, Kenji, Hanada, Shikamaru, Sakura, Kiba, Choji, and Shino were all dead. Only reason he was able to recognize the bodies were that the killer purposely left their faces undamaged as if he wanted him to see this. Naruto wept. These were his friends. He finally found where the coughing noise was coming from. He heard a coughing noise coming from under a big piece of rubble. Naruto lifted up the rubble and saw under it was his best friend from the orphanage. Amy. The girl heard her name being spoken and looked to the speaker of the voice. Naruto watched as fear filled her eyes. No 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 no. Ah. Help. Amy screamed. 
I'm here, I'll save you. Naruto said trying to stop her from screaming. P please spare Emmy. D don't kill me P please. What do you mean Amy? You are like my best friend. Why would I kill you? Said a confused Naruto while walking closer to Amy. M monster. H help. Save me please, yelled Amy. It was like a flip was switched and Naruto lost consciousness again and by the time he woke Amy was ripped into pieces. Nightmare finished it also didn't help that Naruto lived alone by himself. He had nobody to really talk to about these nightmares. Since it was only around 5.30 Naruto decided he might as well go out for a jog or something to clear his head. Streets of Konoha Naruto decided that he would run in the direction of the Hokage Tower since the people who live near there are mostly shinobi. Shinobi are generally neutral with Naruto while the civilians hate Naruto with a passion, although there were a small amount of shinobi who hated him it was nothing like the civilians. Naruto was running towards the Hokage Tower when he heard someone say something. Naruto. Naruto turned around to see what called his name. Upon turning around he saw Amy wearing sweats running up to him. Hey Amy. What are you doing up? Oh well I don't get much sleep in my new apartment, it looks kind of creepy at night. It's kind of hard to explain. Oh well that is unfortunate. So what are you doing so early? Well I had a nightmare and I woke up really early, and being alone in my condo didn't help so I went out to clear my head. Well want to jog together? Might as well, want to grab breakfast after since we will probably be really hungry. Okay. The two teammates jogged around till around 7.30. At 7.30 they realized they were both quite hungry and decided to eat breakfast. Amy refused to eat breakfast at Ichiraku so Naruto was forced to take her to the newly opened restaurant that specializes in breakfast. After eating breakfast they departed for their homes to take a shower, change, and get ready to train. Training Area 26 Naruto and his team's training for the day was mainly physical. They started the day by running 10 miles without the use of chakra. After a short break they had to complete 250 push-ups, 250 crunches, and 250 squats. They had a short lunch break then ran another 10 miles without chakra. After the 10 miles they did 250 pull-ups. Their last training exercise was to run another 10 miles without chakra. Afterwards they did some cool down stretches and cool down exercises. After they did the cool down exercises their senseis allowed them to just hang out for a bit to catch their breath since they were very tired. After the break they practiced ninja team formations. After that they worked on their elemental manipulation again. Okay. Good job today guys. Tomorrow we will be focusing on chakra related stuff so your bodies can rest. Meet us here at 10 am tomorrow. Yane. Said Rado right before the three Tokabetsu Janin peaced out. Oh. Fuck. My whole body hurts. Said Naruto. This is not fun. Not fun at all. I'd rather do D rank missions. I am glad they didn't make me do the full amount but still my body is killing me. Want to lay here for a while then go out to dinner as a team? I can't my mom asked me to eat dinner at home since she slaved over a hot stove to prepare a meal so I should put the effort to come home to eat it. Said Kenji as he started to walk away. Well that's a bust, wanna go out to eat Amy? I'll go on the condition that you have to sleep over at my house tonight. Amy Chan we are too young to be doing that kind of stuff. Geez I'm hurt Naruto-kun, I never knew you thought so low of me. Said Amy pretending to be hurt. I'm sorry Amy Chan. I don't think of you that way, I know you like to tease me but I know you have good morals and wouldn't even go there. Amy was happy she got a reaction from Naruto, but hid it under a face that looked hurt. I guess since you think I'm that dirty you wouldn't want to be in my presence, said Amy before fake crying and trying to run off. Amy, don't cry. You know how much it hurts me to see you cry, said Naruto as he grabbed her wrist to prevent her from leaving. Naruto pulled her in and hugged her. I'm sorry for what I said Amy Chan, I didn't mean it like that. If it makes you feel better I'll sleep over at your house tonight. Thank you Naruto. I just want a little company because my apartment looks creepy at night. Alright Amy Chan where do you want to eat? We will eat first then I'll send a clone to my place to get some clothes and stuff. Can we go to that one dango place? You like dango? What is it with girls and dango? Um a few weeks ago Eno invited all the girls to a girls night and we went to the dango place and it was really good, please Naruto-kun. Um. How about we grab some dango to go and head to Ichiraku's? That is acceptable but I don't like the girl that works there all the time, don't they have any other workers? 
Ichiraku's is a family-run business and, the girl, you are talking about is the owner's daughter. And why don't you like Ayame-chan she is such a nice girl, in fact a few times when I went there she gave me free ramen. Ah. Uh, don't you notice the looks she gives you when you eat ramen? I remember when we went there like four years ago, she looked like a fat kid looking at a steak. You look at me like that too. Uh. You see. I got nothing. Fine let's get some dango to go then head to the ramen stand. Naruto and Amy walked to the dango shop Anko is frequently seen at and bought 10 sticks of dango before heading to Ichiraku's. They took their seats and as they were looking at the menu Amy kept switching her eyes from the menu to Ayame who was looking at Naruto. Ayame actually wasn't too interested in Naruto she actually thought of him as some sort of little brother, but pissing Amy off was one of her hobbies so she would always pretend like she would pounce on Naruto anytime when Amy was around so it would piss her off. Hey. Waiter. Stop staring at him will you? Is there something wrong with looking? I'm thinking about what he will look like in a few years. And if he continues to get more handsome I might just take him for myself. Said Ayame while licking her lips. Ah. Uh, as if he would like you. You are like five years older than him. Ayame Chan you did say I was too young ago when I asked if you were interested. Amy looked in shock because he never knew Naruto asked Ayame if she was interested. Then she remembered that Kiba kept saying Naruto was into older women. It all made sense now. Every time she would walk around with Naruto his eyes would wander sometimes but she didn't think he was checking out some of the older women. Naruto-kun that was like five years ago, right now I'm quite interested. Oh really, I can't say I'm not interested in you. Amy was furious. Naruto was flirting with an older woman right in front of her face. Amy didn't like dealing with older women since at her age her womanly assets have not come into play yet so she was at a huge disadvantage. She needed to do something to stop him, anything. She did what most girls do when they get angry at a guy, they hit him. She smacked him on the head and glared at him. OWW Amy Chan that hurt. What was that for? Kiba was right you like older women. What's wrong with you? Don't take it that hard Amy. How can you compete with this? said Ayame while running her hands over her breasts and turning around and bending over. I know Naruto-kun likes to sneak a peek of my ass whenever I bend over like this to pick something up or get something from under the table. Teased Ayame. Naruto blushed because he was caught. He thought the peeks he took were unseen. Amy noticed the blush and got even more angry. Naruto checks her out when she isn't looking. Why doesn't he check me out? She took it out on Naruto by beating him. Naruto just let her hit him because running away would result in a worse beating. Calm down Amy. Why are you being like this? Did you know Ayame teases you because you react like this? Ayame Nichan why do you keep making her like this? I swear one day she might kill me. Because it's fun Naruto-kun. Anyways what would you guys like to order? I'll get five miso ramens. I'm not hungry anymore, said Amy. One miso ramen for her said Naruto ordering for her because he knew she would be hungry again in a minute or two. Ayame stopped messing with Amy for the whole time they were there. They had a pleasant dinner then Naruto sent a shadow clone to run to his house to grab some stuff he would need to sleep over at Amis house and Amy gave the clone her address so it could find her apartment. As they were walking to Amis apartment he felt like someone was following them. I know you are there. Come out. Said Naruto. I was hoping you didn't see me. Naruto-kun said a woman wearing a cat mask that wasn't wearing her standard anbu gear but instead was wearing tight black clothing which accentuated her curves. Nako chan why were you following me? Naruto-kun you never visit me anymore. You know you were welcome in the anbu offices right? I miss you. I miss dressing you up. Amy noticed that the suffix the girl used with Naruto. The girl looked like she was in her late teens to early twenties according to her fully matured womanly assets which Amy was very jealous of. W who are you? How do you know and Naruto-kun? Naruto-kun you haven't told her about our relationship. I'm hurt, I thought I meant something to you. Uh, I have told her and my other friends. She must have just forgot. I'll never forget what you guys did for me, said Naruto. Oh my god. What is their relationship? I wonder what she did for Naruto-kun. I hope they didn't, her thoughts were cut off by the ANBU's voice. Well it's nice to know you remember me. And I was watching your date with this girl. I was there four years ago too. Okay. Well CYA Nako Chan we have to go it's getting late. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Yelled the female Anbu as the two kids ran away. 
The Anbu used her right pointer finger to press some device on her ear. Kakashi Senpei, what next? Well, we wait till they go out or something. Hi. Also, why are you wearing that? Trying to seduce someone? Ha 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 ha, Kakashi Senpei always making jokes. I didn't feel like wearing the Anbu armor. Amis apartment, this apartment is not that bad. I don't understand why you are complaining so much about it. When the lights are off the lights that come in though the window make it look weird. Alright. Would you like something to drink? Tea, hot chocolate, anything? I'm fine Amy. Naruto looked into Amis room and noticed that her mattress and her pillows were not covered. Amy why isn't your mattress and pillows covered? Um. Well I didn't think I needed them. Alright I'll send out my clone to grab some from my place. Naruto created another clone and sent it to his house to grab some pillowcases and a cover for the mattress. As he looked around Amis apartment was basically empty, she didn't have much belongings, clothes, anything. Hey Amy it's getting kinda late we should go to sleep. Naruto went to the bathroom to brush his teeth then when he went out he started to set up his sleeping bag on the couch. Amy went into the bathroom after him and brushed her teeth. When she walked to the bed she was wondering where Naruto went. She checked the couch and he was lying there in a sleeping bag. Naruto. What? Why are you on the couch in a sleeping bag? What do you mean? You wanted me to sleep over right? So I'm sleeping over on the couch in a sleeping bag. Come to bed with me. Amy I thought we were going to have a normal sleepover. Please Naruto-kun we won't do anything that you don't want to do. I just need some company. Um. Okay but not funny business okay. I promise. Well I promise no funny business unless you initiate it. Alright fine. Said Naruto as he got up and followed her into her bed. Amis bed was only a full size so there was not much room for two people. If they both laid down with their heads on the pillow trying to minimize contact they would be elbowing each other. Naruto-kun, can you hold me as I go to sleep? Said Amy who was trying to get the most out of the sleepover as she could. Naruto had no problems holding her since he has been holding her since they were little kids. Naruto kind of thought of Amy as somewhat of a little sister so it wasn't too weird for him. Amy on the other hand didn't think of Naruto as a brother but more of boyfriend who was unaware of their relationship yet. Um. Sure. Just like old times. Naruto said before wrapping his arms around her. Amy quickly dozed off to sleep and Naruto followed not too long after. Next morning Naruto surprisingly slept pretty well and wondered where he was when he woke up. He remembered that he slept over at Amis house the other day but since she wasn't still in bed with him that meant she already got up. Naruto decided to brush his teeth before he would walk into the kitchen for breakfast. As he opened the door to the kitchen he was met with the smell of breakfast, well the smell of burnt breakfast. Amy heard the sound of the door open and looked at Naruto with a close to crying face before she ran up to him and hugged him. And Naruto-kun I'm sorry. I, I tried to cook breakfast for you for doing me a favor and I got distracted and it be burned. It's fine Amy, throw away the burnt stuff. I'll cook breakfast for you for letting me stay in your home. Naruto looked in her fridge for ingredients to use to cook breakfast. He couldn't find much since Amy wasted a lot of ingredients and it seemed like she didn't have much groceries to begin with. Since there was basically nothing left except eggs and bread Naruto just made scrambled eggs with toast. Amy was happy with whatever Naruto made just because he made it. After they ate breakfast they took a shower, separately of course and got ready to head to their training ground. While walking to their team meeting spot they ran into Kiba. Hey Naruto. What's up man? Nothing much. Just heading to training ground 26 for team stuff ya know. Hey dude I heard some douche bag destroyed a small forest in that training ground. Naruto's face betrayed him and subconsciously let Kiba know that it was him. So it was you. Dude I remember that one time when you had a dick measuring contest, one, with Sasuke using fireballs during a taijutsu spar. Iruka sensei got so mad at me man, I think he used to hate me back then. Kiba was sniffing something in the air and looked at Naruto with a huge smile. He did hate you back then. Oh by the way before I forget here. Kiba handed Naruto 500 Ryo. What is this for? Asked a confused Naruto, you know, our bet. I only remember one bet and I don't think anyone has completed the objective yet said Naruto until he realized that Kiba must have smelled something on him. Naruto pulled Kiba aside for a second and left Amy wondering why he pulled him aside. Dude we didn't do anything. I just slept in the same bed as her because she asked, 
I can't take your money, said Naruto who tried to hand the money back. But we bet on who would sleep with girl that isn't your mom first. We assumed there would be sex but it was never part of the bet, so take the money. Oh. Okay. They walked back to Amy and Kiba decided to tease them. So Amy how was it? Huh. How was IT? What is IT? Let me rephrase my question. How was Naruto's performance last night? Amy was taking a drink of water from her water bottle when he asked the question. As soon as she heard the full question she spit out all the water in her mouth. What? What are you talking about? I can smell his scent on you, and you on him. It's okay actually I'm proud of my boy, first one of our class to get some. Amy punched the boy in the face and Akamaru jumped off the top of his head to not get hurt from the fall. Naruto-kun and I didn't do anything, said Amy before walking off pulling Naruto with him. Dude why did you have to do that? You know how she is, said Naruto as they walked away. On the way to training ground 26, so Naruto, since you somehow won 500 Ryo can I have a favor? Um. Dot you want a small cut or something? No, I want you to sleep over some time just like yesterday. Aw oh man I have to do it again? You make it sound like hugging me is a chore. Well. When Amy heard his lack of a response she was pissed. He thought of her as a chore. She thought she finally got through to him and he began to return her feelings after she woke up to him with his arms around her. That was the main reason she tried so hard to cook breakfast. Naruto noticed her facial expression after what he said. He was just messing around and didn't think she would take it so seriously. Amy I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. I was just messing around with you. You have nothing to be sorry for. It's not your fault that you think of me as a chore. I bet you don't even like having me as a friend. I am really sorry Amy Chan. I was just joking around. If you want I can stop messing around with you too much. Please Amy, you are like my best friend, if I ever mess up again make sure to tell me or hit me or do whatever. Don't even worry about it, it's not like I mean that much to you, I'm just that clingy bitch that annoys you all the time, and you don't need to sleep over anymore, I would hate to force you into doing something that you loathe. Amy was going to walk away but Naruto grabbed her wrist and hugged her. She wasn't really expecting this since she felt that he didn't care much for her. She thought she was just an old friend of his. Amy please. I'm so sorry. I'm kind of dumb sometimes so please forgive this dumb bastard. I don't have that many friends, I can't afford to lose my best friend. Okay, I forgive you. Now we have to go before we are late. Training ground 26 Their training for today mainly consisted of chakra control exercises. They wanted to teach their students how to get good chakra control. The first exercise they tried to teach them was sticking a leaf on various parts on their bodies. Naruto was told to practice tree climbing while sticking leaves on his body since he showed that he already learned how to do both tree climbing and the leaf sticking thing. Amy with her good chakra control blew through the exercise and moved on to tree climbing. Kenji on the other hand had bad chakra control. But after a few tips from another person who had shit tier chakra control he was able to move on to the tree climbing exercise. When he successfully performed the leaf exercise he thanked Naruto before trying the tree climbing exercise. Hey Kenji are your parents still making you eat dinner at your house? Yep every day. One day you should tell your parents beforehand so we can hang out. Because we basically train all day which leaves us not much time to hang out. Yeah one day. Alright I'll see you guys tomorrow. Kenji said before leaving. Hey Amy want to go eat dinner? Sure as long as it's not Ichirakus. Alright where do you want to go? Um that new sushi place looks good. The raw fish Amy was looking through the menu and noticed that things there were not cheap. She didn't have too much money since their team had not started doing missions yet so her only source of income was a small allowance given to Jenin for a few months since they might not be able to do bigger missions. Most of that allowance went into her rent and only left her a small amount for food. She usually used the money to buy groceries and eat at home or get a treat at the dango shop once in a while, if she spent the money here she wouldn't be able to eat for a few days. Naruto noticed the look on her face as she was looking at the menu. She looked at it, let out a small gasp, then looked like she was thinking of something else. Amy Chan is there a problem? Um. No? Uh. Maybe. What's the problem? Well. Um. It's kinda. Expensive. Naruto chuckled when he heard her say it was expensive. Amy. Whenever we go out have you ever paid for anything? Uh. No? Exactly. Don't worry I got this order whatever you want. 
Amy smiled since he basically saved her ass. They ordered and ate their meal with a little small talk here and there but nothing really important was said. As they were leaving Naruto insisted he escort her to her house. Amy was happy he was showing concern for her and was scheming on how to get him to stay at her place again. Nako chan I know you are following us again. Well just know I will be following you guys all the time. Well I guess I have two stalkers now. You have another one. Who is it? Asked Amy. Ya Naruto kun who's your other stalker? I bet she's not good as I am. Ya you are a lot better than her and her name is Hanada Hyuga. Hanada. Gur. Growled Amy. Heiress of the Hyuga clan, you have your work cut out for you girly. Anyways where are you guys headed to? Um. Ms. Nako we are going to my house, he is escorting me. My my Naruto I never knew you were such a gentleman, or are you trying to take advantage of the poor girl? And no I would never. I hate rapists and child molesters remember? That's not how you were last night. I remember waking up to your hand on my ass. That's not even the worst part. One of your body parts was very happy to see me in the morning. Teased Amy. Naruto blushed since he had no idea that he was groping her in her sleep and he didn't know his morning wood was poking her. Naruto, you are such a hypocrite. You say you hate rapists and child molesters and you did both to her last night. I didn't rape anyone and the molesting was on accident, and it wouldn't have happened if she let me sleep on the couch or didn't ask me to hold her. Well I guess it wouldn't be rape even if you did because you can't rape the willing, said Nako. Hey, yelled Amy. Well Naruto remember I will be watching you, said Nako before disappearing. In the trees, what do you think Kakashi Senpei? Hum I don't know, it seems like the girl is way more interested in Naruto than he is in her. But you never know, let's keep following him. Hi. Amis apartment, thanks for keeping me safe and escorting me Naruto-kun. No problem. Want to come inside? Uh, sure. Naruto said before entering her apartment. What would you like to drink? I'm fine thanks. Amy I need to ask you something. What is it? Do you like living here? What do you mean? Well yesterday when I was here I noticed that you were missing a lot of necessary things, and you yourself said it's hard for you to sleep at night. Yeah I guess I don't like it too much but I don't really have a choice. Well, if you want. Dot you could stay with me. I mean I have three extra bedrooms in my condo and I get kind of lonely sometimes so it would be nice to share with a friend and you don't need to pay anything since the condo is already fully paid. Amy basically tackled him when he asked her to share his condo with him. Really Naruto? Yeah I mean living together is better than living alone right? Yeah. What do I bring? Just bring your clothes and stuff that you like. The stuff you don't like just throw it away or something. And tomorrow I'll go with you to the Hokage's office so you can tell him you're moving out. Al thought Naruto brought sealing scrolls they didn't need to use M because everything Amy wanted to take fit in her backpack. After roof jumping for 20 minutes they finally arrived at Naruto's condo. How did four bedrooms fit in there? The previous owner was good with seals. Guy was a genius. No way, let's go in I bet it isn't that impressive. Naruto opened the door and they went inside. Amy didn't know how it was possible but the inside of the condo was anything but small. Naruto showed her all the stuff inside the house in the four bedrooms, he showed her everything except the areas with the weapons and the scrolls in the basement. He asked her to pick out a room and she picked the room closest to his and she took her stuff out of her backpack. Naruto noticed she only had three pairs of clothing and basically nothing else in her backpack. He would have to take her shopping or ask the girls to take her shopping, but he was worried they might make her buy a shitload of stuff she doesn't need since he went shopping with Ino once. He couldn't help but notice how happy Amy was. He had never seen her this happy in her life. Naruto liked making Amy happy since he thought of her as a little sister and he liked to spoil her. He would try to keep that smile on her face as long as possible, she had gone through too many bad things already. One month later Naruto and Amy enjoyed living together, they both used to live alone and feel lonely but now they had someone there whenever they needed something. They were like a tiny family, they would eat together have a movie night together and sometimes invite some friends, and play board games sometimes. As a team they had been training for the whole month, each and every one of the members of Team 13 felt like they were invincible. They had undergone a rough one month in hell training courtesy of their three sensei. Although it felt like hell they could feel the improvements. Amy gained a little muscle which helped her taijutsu problems and made her a lot faster which worked well with her long-range fighting style. 
She also enlarged her chakra pool a little which helped her stamina. Not only did her chakra pool increase but her chakra control got better and she was able to use that along with her bigger chakra pool to do some medium level genjutsu and be able to use her chakra with ninjutsu without wasting any. Kenji improved his taijutsu style a little and decided he would change weapons, he now used an enlarged kanai knife on his left hand and a ninjutsu on his right hand. The training increased his strength and speed so he decided to upgrade his weapons since he could afford to wield heavier weapons for an increase in range. Kenji's bad chakra control improved to decent chakra control, he naturally had an above average chakra pool which got bigger during training so chakra control was not easy for him. His chakra pool increase and his decent chakra control increased his stamina and helped him throw out more jutsu. He was not only restricted to short range combat anymore. Naruto didn't improve too much from his teacher's training but improved during the time he trained himself. He increased his weights from 5 pounds on each limb and vest to 15 pounds weights on each limb in a 30 pounds vest. That is 100 extra pounds, considering the boy only weighed 100 pounds to begin with he was carrying double his weight. He didn't want to get weights that were too heavy since he was still a growing boy and he wouldn't want to stunt his growth and become a midget. Naruto's chakra control improved a little due to his teachers teaching him how to waterwalk. He also learned more jutsu from the scroll Itachi gave him and was learning the jutsu he stole from the scroll of seals. Naruto was the most versatile member of Team 13 he could be placed anywhere and do well. Naruto's only weakness was his inability to do genjutsu or so they thought. Naruto had been working on genjutsu by himself but he was unable to perform genjutsu without the aid of his Sharingan. His Sharingan was still only at two tomo but he trained really hard to try to get the third tomo, so far he had not been successful. The three Tokabetsu Janin were very proud of their students and the way they improved. The three Tokabetsu Janin decided that training was more important than missions early on since they wanted to work on individual abilities first. After they noticed that each one of Team 13 was good enough by themselves they started a little teamwork exercises. The exercises they did were mainly mock missions. The mock missions were very well made and if they had a rank in difficulty they would probably be a lower C rank mission. The good thing about the mock missions is it helped prepare them for the real missions they would go thought soon. It also had zero chance of death so it was safe and gave the team experience in how to deal with different situations. They did all kinds of missions from breaking in a place to retrieve a document of a person, to assassination, and fighting multiple opponents that are weaker such as bandits. At the moment Kenji was the tallest among them since he was a year older. Kenji was standing at 5 feet tall and Naruto was close at 4 feet 11 inches and Amy was 4 feet 9 inches. They were all average height to slightly taller than the other rookie 12. During the times the rookie 12 minus Sasuke hung out which was usually during the weekends they would talk about their training and other stuff. Team 13 found out they were the only ones who went through a very rigorous training schedule and the other teams had started doing missions. Although they started doing missions they were still doing D ranks so team 13 wasn't too jealous. But the other rookies were surprised that during the weekdays they were worked to the ground. They were also surprised that Team 13 had three sensei but were okay with it after finding out that they were only Tokabetsu Janin, which is why there needed to be more than one. Usually when the rookies hung out they would be in one big group for a while then slowly split into two groups, the males and the females. The guys talked about guy things, cool jutsu they learned, made fun of each other and stuff for fun. The females would talk about the guys especially Sasuke for Ino and Sakura. Those two had stopped being friends and became more of rivals or frenemies. Sakura especially would brag about how close she can get to Sasuke but complain about her other teammate and said she would prefer if he wasn't there. Ino would complain about her team since she had no choice to be on another team because of their fathers. She liked Shikamaru and Shoji as friends but after seeing their faces almost all the time since her birth it got tiring. Amy and Hanada were the only ones who were happy about their teams so they mainly listened to Sakura and Ino complain. When Amy would talk it would mainly be about Naruto and how cool his is which kind of annoyed Sakura a bit and always replied with, Sasuke is cooler. Ino would just listen to Amy talk about Naruto and agree with something since she knew Naruto was probably the strongest of the rookies during her experiences with him as a small kid. After a while sometimes the rookies grouped up together again other times Ino would invite the girls to go eat dango or go shopping or something. During the times the girls leave the guys would do random stuff. 
Sometimes they played basketball or other sports, sometimes they just hung around Ichirakus or had a food eating contest between Choji and Naruto. One time Kiba even managed to persuade the other guys to peep on women in the bathhouse. They would get caught sometimes and had to run away from angry women until Naruto came up with a solution. He taught the other guys the sexy jutsu so they could infiltrate the women's bath but upon infiltrating the bath their noses betrayed them and they had to go to the hospital due to the lack of blood. The other boys vowed never to do that any time soon due to the fear of dying of blood loss. Kiba was the only one who went back but after ending up in the hospital many times his mom and sister wondered what caused it and found out the reason and beat him up pretty bad. Although Naruto's jutsu almost killed him many times he still thought the sexy jutsu was one of the best creations of mankind. But then again Kiba was a pervert. After a month of training Team 13 was finally about to do missions. Hokage Tower, Hokage-sama can we request a mission? Wait gg how many D rank missions are required to start doing C rank missions? We increased it this year, you need to complete at least 50 D rank missions and the amount of C rank missions are higher required to enter the Chunin exams this year was increased to 5. GG can team 13 request 50 D rank missions right now? Naruto how can you possibly complete 50 D rank missions in one day? The record for one team completing was 10 in one day and they worked their asses off. Well I'll make a bet with you Gigi. If our team can complete 50 D rank missions before 9 pm. Then you give us a scroll with A rank or B rank jutsu according to our elemental affinity. And if you lose you need to complete 100 D rank missions before you can move up to C rank missions. Deal. Get those scrolls ready old man. Naruto said as he shook the Hokage's hand. The rest of team 13 had their jaws on the ground. Naruto was able to make a deal with the Hokage to get each one of them a powerful jutsu. They were worried that they couldn't complete the tasks but they didn't try to stop Naruto from making the deal. The Hokage handed them a bag full of D-rank mission scrolls. As soon as they got outside Naruto handed out the scrolls, he gave one scroll to Amy and held the rest. Naruto are you going to do all 49 of them by yourself? said Kenji. Actually I will be going with you guys but these guys will handle the other missions," said Naruto before he made 147 clones and handed every third one a different mission scroll. He then told them to henge into random people before sending them out. The original walked up to his team after the clones left and looked at the scroll. Capture Tora the cat. 30 minutes later, fuck this cat man, said Kenji. I know right, I kind of want to kill it, said Naruto. Normally I would hit you for saying that but I agree this time, said Amy. All right, I have a plan," said Naruto. "What do you have?" asked the other two. "Okay, I will put the cat underground and you two will put the cage on top of it and I will push the cat into the cage." "Hi." Naruto went underground and pulled the cat under except his head. His team put the cage opening on top of the cat's head and Naruto pushed the cat out inside of the cage and locked it shut. "Ha. Got you you piece of shit. Now if it was up to me you would be dead." Hokage's tower his team headed to the entrance of the Hokage tower and one by one clones came in with their mission scrolls with the client's signatures on them. They walked into the Hokage's office. Naruto kicked the door down to look like a boss and startled the Hokage who was reading his precious Icha Icha book. Naruto, I assume you gave up and hoped to back out of the deal. Nope, we're done. Impossible, Tora the cat itself usually takes a few hours. We caught Tora in 30 minutes and we did all the missions at the same time," Naruto said as he put the bag full of scrolls on the Hokage's desk. The Hokage went though each one and noticed that the client had signed each scroll that said they did the mission. He didn't understand how he did it, even thought they had three Jonin Sensei they shouldn't have been able to do them that fast. But a deal was a deal and he handed them a scroll with a jutsu. He gave Naruto three A rank jutsus one for each of his elements. Amy got a B-rank water jutsu since he doubted she had the chakra to perform an A-rank one. Kenji received an A-rank lightning jutsu since Reido told the Hokage he believed that he could do it. After they got their jutsu they were given the rest of the day off and the three genin left while their sensei stayed. Hokage-sama can I talk to you about something, said Genma. Yes Genma. I would like to request some sort of competition to see how well our genin are doing, or at least the rookie 12. Sounds like a good idea. It will also give them some sort of a rivalry which might help them train harder," said Hiruzen. Only the rookie 12 and their sensei should be able to attend and it should be a private thing, 
Would you like to include Team 9 and Guy? Said Hirazan. Honestly I wouldn't since they had a whole extra year of training on our kids and it won't be very fair. Okay. I will send a message to the rookie 12's sensei and the competition will be in two months time. To be continued. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next part.